get started. The Zoning Commission will come to order. Good evening, everyone, and I'll call to order at 7.03 p.m. The Stratford Zoning Commission meeting for July the 28th, uh, 2021. It is now open for public hearing for those petitions advertised to be heard at this session. Uh, Commissioner Vicola is not present, so Ms. Manos will be sitting in for him until such time as he arrives, if he does. Uh, should any items on tonight's agenda take more time than anticipated, this public hearing may conclude at 11 p.m. and may be continued to another date, which will be established at that time. Any items not heard tonight will be heard at the continued public hearing if we need to go down that way. For the record, petitions to be heard this evening will be advertised in the Connecticut Post. We're advertising the Connecticut Post on July the 15th and July the 22nd. The chair has been in, uh, advised of a request uh, due to the anticipated length of petition number 1, 4060 Beach Drive in Washington Parkway, uh, that one of the items on the agenda has requested if they could move ahead. Um, 584 Success Avenue, is there objection from any members from hearing Success Avenue first? Hearing no objection, 584 Success Avenue, petition of JC Jeep Auto Club LLC, seeking a site plan review and special case to approve a private club not operated for profit in a CA zone. Good evening, Attorney Knott. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Manos, Madam Secretary, Ms. Atoda, members of the commission. I think we need to have the uh, petition read. That was, I just read that. Sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Barry Knott. I'm a lawyer with the firm of Knott, Knott and Dunn with offices at 1656 Main Street in Stratford. I'm here this evening on behalf of J.C. Jeep Charitable Organization, Inc., doing business as J.C. Jeep Auto Club, 584 Success Avenue, Stratford. At this time, I'd like to submit the certificates of mailing and make reference to photos and exhibits, uh, which I have just uh, handed to each of you in a folder to which I will be making reference during the course of my presentation. Jim, thank you. I'd also like to submit a revised floor plan, uh, full size, which I told Susmitha I would bring to the meeting. You already have a copy of this in the folders that I handed to you. This is an application for special case approval to establish a bona fide club not operated for profit at 584 Success Avenue. The property is located in a CA zone. As you know, in Stratford, the CA zone is commercial in nature. This address is located in the retail strip center, which has a variety of commercial uses on site. Section 4.1.6.6 and 20 of the Stratford zoning regulation provide that a bona fide club not operated for profit is a permitted use in this zone subject to special case approval. Uh, at this time, I'd like to reference the site plan, uh, which is exhibit one. And you can see, if you look at it carefully, that the premises that is the subject of this application is 1,470 square feet in size. It's located in the building that is 13,006 square feet in size on a lot that is 1.52 acres in size. Exhibit two is the interior seating plan of the premises. Essentially, the interior consists of a social club area containing a total of 20, 23 seats made up of six bar stools at the bar and 17 seats at six tables. There is also a billiard table located in the middle of the open space to the rear of the facility also at the rear is the mechanical room, the kitchen, and the bathroom. J.C. Jeep Auto Club is the trade name of the J.C. Jeep Charitable Organization, Inc., which is a private not-for-profit club operated under the laws of the state of Connecticut. Reference three, excuse me, exhibit three, are copies of the corporate documentation including the, or the organization and first annual report, minutes of the first membership meeting, me, minutes of the first meeting of the incorporators, minutes of the first meeting of the board of directors, 
and the bylaws of this nonprofit corporation. The membership of this club cur currently consists of approximately 12 persons and their families, all of whom owe, own Jeep motor vehicles. The purpose of the club is to provide fundraising through charitable events for needy or ill persons in the community. For example, in April of this year, the club held a fundraiser to raise money for a young lady suffering from leukemia. In June, it held another fundraiser for a young lady who needed help with her medical expenses and to pay her rent and monthly utilities while she was recuperating from her illness. The club, club holds approximately one such charitable event per month. At other times, the facility will be used by members uh, or rented to non-members for baby showers, birthday parties, after baptism lunches, etc. Now, at this time, I'd like to reference exhibits four through 12, which are the photographs of the subject premises. Exhibit four is a photo taken a while back from across uh, Success Avenue showing the strip center in its entirety. Exhibit five is a better picture also taken from across the street, which shows this particular store uh, with the yellow sign uh, and that is located approximately in the middle of the building. Now, in the back of Exhibit 4, you can see what the interior of the premises looks, looks like. They just got through renovating the place, and this gentleman is uh, doing some cleanup duties uh, on the rear of that photograph. Exhibit 6 is another photo of the front of the building, and as you can see, Jeeps are prominently located to the front of the building, Jeeps owned by the members. And Exhibit 7 is a close-up of the actual storefront of this facility. The rear side of Exhibit 7 happens to be a photograph taken in Hartford when all of the Jeep clubs of Connecticut went to a church in, Hardship, in, in Hartford to have all of their cars blessed by a priest at that particular uh, parish who was interested in uh, getting involved in the, the, the Jeep Club. As you can see, there are numerous vehicles involved in that photo. However, they're not all from this particular club. Now, Exhibit 8 is one of the flyers that the club sent out for the April 4, 2021 fundraising event for this young lady who had leukemia. The other side of that photo is a group picture of some of the people that attended that fundraiser. Exhibit 9 is another flyer for the same event, the April 4th, 2021 event, and the rear side has photos of some of the people who attended in front of the building. Exhibit 10 is a flyer for the June event, and this was for a young lady by the name of Vanessa who had medical expenses as a result of a serious illness. They raised money for her, as I indicated, for rent, medical expenses, and utilities. Exhibit 11 is a picture of a birthday cake that uh, was involved in one of the birthday parties that the club members had. And on the back of that, you'll see some of the people that were in attendance at that birthday party. Photograph number 12 is a birthday party for a 50-year-old person at the club. And the back side of that is a photo of one of my clients getting the bar ready for the party. Finally, as far as the exhibits are concerned, exhibit six, six, 13, rather, is uh, the fire marshal's notice of maximum occupancy reflecting the fact that the premises have been inspected by the fire marshal and is fit for occupancy. Now at this point I want to discuss Jay's administrative comments. He says, the commission may choose to inquire about how the club qualifies as a bona fide club not operated for pro profit. My response to that is you can see from exhibit three, the club is a legitimate non-for-profit corporation 
and I have provided you with the corporate documentation evidencing same. He goes on to say examples of charitable events might be helpful for the commission to better understand the club's purpose. And I respond by saying I have indicated earlier in this presentation the type of charitable events that the club conducts, and I have provided you with photographs of flyers advertising same. Those are exhibits eight, nine, and 10. Jay asks, how many events are anticipated each month? As I indicated, uh, it is currently anticipated that approximately one charitable event uh, will be conducted per month. How many members are affiliated with the club? As I indicated, currently there are 12 members and their families who are affiliated with the club. In order to be eligible for, owner, for membership in the club, you have to own a Jeep. So it's not like people are gonna be signing up left and right, except for Jeep owners. Uh, Jay asks, as there is no liquor for the subject use, how will the club police the consumption distribution of alcohol by members and non-members when the space is rented for events. The club is closed to the public unless a non-member rents the facility for a baptism, sweet 15 party, birthday party, shower, etc. In this event, a club member will always be present on the premises to act as a door person, a chaperone, and ultimately a maintenance man after the event is over. By the way, this application was on the June 23rd, 2021 agenda. You may remember it. It was withdrawn almost immediately. The original petition was for special case approval and a private club liquor license. The liquor license application was withdrawn because we determined after we submitted the application that a private club, not for profit, is not eligible for a liquor license until after it's been in existence for three years. And this is a brand new club, so they weren't eligible for a liquor license. As a result of that, we withdrew the application for the liquor license. Jay asks, will there be live entertainment on site? Answer, no. Live entertainment will not be permitted on the site. Music will be provided through a cell phone with a Bluetooth speaker. Additionally, there are three 42-inch flat screen TVs on the premises and a billiard table. Jay also discusses the necessity of the application complying with the special case criteria set forth in section 20.2.1 of the zoning regulations. The first such criteria is, will the use be in conformance with all the requirements of the district in which the property is located? My answer to that is, I have indicated earlier in my presentation, this property is located in a commercial zone and a nonprofit private club is a permitted use in a commercial zone subject to special case approval, and I'm here for that special case approval tonight. Will the location be compatible in relation to the size of the property in the existing neighborhood development? Answer, a private club of this nature is compatible with a variety of the other commercial uses currently located on this site. The whole site are commercial uses. Will the proposed use be in conformance with the town plan of development? As I indicated, the proposed use is a permitted use in this zone and therefore is compatible with the town plan of development. Will the location and details of the proposed use adversely affect safety in the street or increase traffic and congestion in the area? This proposed nonprofit club will contain a minimum of members, 12, uh, and will conduct a minimum number of activities so as not to adversely affect safety in the street or increase traffic congestion. Will there be any emission of noise, light, smoke, odor, gas, dust, vibration that may adversely affect land, water, or air quality? No such adverse effect will re result because this is a relatively benign activity. When it comes to activities in commercial zones, this is a pretty benign activity. Will the proposed use adversely affect tax valuation of neighboring properties? There will be no adverse effect on tax valuation of neighboring properties because the use is of a minimal and benign nature and is permitted in the commercial zone in which it is being proposed. Finally, will the use create any fire or police hazards. This application has received no adverse comments from the police department 
or the fire department as a result of the review process that all special case applications go through. You can also see from Exhibit 13 that the fire marshal has signed off on the safety aspect of the facility. Accordingly, no such hazards are anticipated. Therefore, I believe I have responded to all the questions raised in the administrative comments. I've satisfied all the special case approval criteria, and I would ask this application be approved so that the club members can continue with their good works at this location as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Questions from commissioners? Mr. Jenner? You had, you had mentioned um, about a liquor license. Um, was, with the liquor license, was it their intent to sell alcohol, and, and now they'll just... Well, to be, honest, to, to be honest with you, when I first met with them, they thought they had to have a liquor license mm -hmm. in order to operate a nonprofit club conducting itself in activities as I have just described to you. They thought they needed a liquor license mm -hmm. in order to do that. They don't need a liquor license in order to do that. They can do that as a private club, as long as they're not selling liquor. It's not a problem with the Liquor Commission. Now, three years from now, who knows what they may decide to do at that point in time. But to be honest with you, I would be surprised if they ever apply for a liquor license at this location. It's only 1,400 square feet, mm. you know, and, and everything they want to do, they can do as a private club without a liquor license. And liquor licenses are, uh, they're expensive. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and as far as the parking goes, I know you had some pictures there. Some well, the pictures I showed you was the front of the building. Right. In back, mm -hmm. it is a huge empty lot okay. of, a pro of over an acre of empty space. So there's more than adequate parking on this site for a zillion cars. And, and is there access to the club from the rear of the building where the parking yeah, is? Yeah, yes, there's and, a rear door to okay. the club, yeah. Okay, that's, that's all I had. Thank you, sir. Um, any other members? Commissioner Francis? Yeah, so they want a liquor license to maybe eventually sell liquor, or I, is it just? They, they had originally it, applied for, they originally thought they were eligible for a liquor license, which is why we applied for a, approval from you in June. As it turns out, they're not eligible. In the meantime, I sat down with them and went over with them what activities they're interested in doing and whether they can do it without a liquor license. And as it turns out, the activities that they're interested in doing are all of the ones that I just articulated. And they don't need a liquor license to do that. Now, whether things are gonna change three years from now, I don't know, but I suspect they're never gonna need a liquor license here because it's such a small club. Well, that's an assumption. Yeah. We don't know what they wanna do down yeah. the line. Right. Exactly. And is there a liquor license in that that uh, yes, structure there's a, there's already a, there's a bar existed? There. There's a bar there. I think it's called JR's. Uh, so there's at least one bar there. Uh, but this place is not going to be competing with that bar at all. But no package stores? No, no, no. Well, I don't know about package stores. No, no package stores. And has the residents had any objections to no. them? Or has they addressed the residents? Because, I mean, there are residents. There's a, com a couple complexes yeah, around there. Let, 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 me, let me tell you about the residences. There's a condominium immediately behind this acre and a half property. It's uh, Henry Avenue. It's the Henry Avenue uh, condos. I forget the name of it. So at, at, pursuant to your regulations, I had to send notices to abutters. And when you abut a condominium property, you've got to send a notice to every person who owns a unit in the condominium. I sent out 120 letters, cost 140 bucks. <laughs> and one day I get a call from a guy. Ah, my Bubba, why did I get a letter from you? I don't like getting letters from lawyers. And I'm saying to myself, I didn't recognize this guy, you know. So it finally dawned on me that he was one of the people that lived in the condo. I said, you got a letter from me because I'm required to send all the abutting property owners, including all the condominium unit owners, a letter telling them about what my client is planning on doing. What's he planning on doing? I said, he's going to have a charitable private club for people that own Jeep. Oh, I don't care about that. You know, but so then when we didn't go forward in June 
and we were now on for tonight, I had to send them all a letter again. Another 140 bucks. This time, I didn't get any telephone calls from them. So, thank you. Any other comments or questions, Mr. Henry? So, some of the pictures you had showed, uh, I mean, uh, they weren't, they weren't uh, drawings, they were actual pictures. Yeah. So, the, the club is in existence no. already? Or? No, what happened was this. My client signed a lease to rent this property, mm -hmm. not realizing that he needed zoning approval. And this was in the spring, okay? So, somehow, I think the health department found out that the, the place was open, they were, they were getting it geared up to open up, and either the health department or the fire department went up there and said, you know, you can't do this without zoning approval. And at that point, they had started to renovate the place. And they contacted Jay, and Jay told them that they, they had to stop operating the facility until they get their zoning approval. So when we couldn't go forward in June, they, my clients were devastated because they've been paying rent on this place and haven't been able to use it since like March. So that's, that's what, why those photos exist. So they, they had been using it though? Prior? No, 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 not since they got notice from Jay. No, no, not b but before. They're, yeah, for, for a couple of weeks maybe. So they had no complaints during that no, time frame? No, no, so, no, no. I mean, whatever the activities will be, yeah. will be the same as what they were doing towards yeah, that before exactly. they were made aware? Right. Yeah. So, the, and there were no complaints no. during that time frame. No. Nope. Um, the back lot there. Do they intend to use that for for gathering? Well, or? I I don't know if it's going to be necessary. Uh, I mean, what they do is, uh, you know, the, the the if you look at that thing from the fire marshal, they can only have either forty three or forty nine people there. I think. Mm -hmm. So, and 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 most of their meetings are at night. Now, when when they have their meetings at night, most of the stores are closed. Right. So. The parking is not going to be a problem. Would, would, they need, would they need some special permit from the town if they were to have some type of gathering, a, a Jeep Jamboree, so to speak, in the rear lot? There's an acre. Uh, that I cannot tell you. I don't know that, Mike. Okay. I don't know. I know they were having, they were ha when, when they were in Bridgeport, they were having... Um, outdoor events in Bridgeport, and they got permission from the city to close the street upon which the outdoor event was taking place. They did that twice. Okay. And the city gave them the permit, and there were no problems as far as that was concerned. So typically when we do, say, a carnival, yeah. you know, not to say there would be something to that extent, but we do a carnival, they'll come get the proper permits. I'd just like to make sure that if they were going to do some type of a large gathering in the rear lot, it's a, it's a large lot, and with Jeeps, you're not necessarily limited to smooth terrain. Right. Uh, oh, no, that could be doing any of it. But I'm just saying, if, if, they, if they decided to have a 1,000 Jeeps over for a jamboree in the rear acre lot, that they would, they well, would, if they would like, come to the town to take out a permit prior to to make sure that they met the, all the fire, just like we do with the carnival, the yeah. fire, the police, whatever, and just that, you know, we would ask that if we approve it, that that would be something they would do if that was their intent. And, not, and they may or may not, but... If you look at the last paragraph of Jay's administrative comments, he suggests that you impose a condition on the approval that they will apply for any special permits they need from zoning, should that become necessary. He actually mentions that in his administrative comments. And if any of the members of the town staff would want to chime in on this conversation so that it's clear to the applicant and their counsel uh, what their legal responsibilities are, that'd be fine. Sure. Um, good evening, I'm Susmita. Uh, Dota town planner. Um, typically, when you um, when your client is uh, planning to hold an outdoor event, he would be required to seek a permit from the town and go through all proper channels like fire, police, um, and zoning. So, um, like I, like you said, um, the approval can be conditional, stating that in the future, if any, um, you know. If the scope of work changes or, you know, legalizing the work that has already been done, mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, you have to follow the zoning and building uh, regulations. Yeah, obviously we have no problem with that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my only question, actually that answered my question because it was actually regarding the, the rear lot of the property and how that would be used. So I think you answered that. So I think we're Thank good. you very much. Thank you. 
Okay, are there any members of the public that wish to speak in favor of this petition only? Anybody wish to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody wish to speak in opposition to this petition? Okay. If not, we'll take a motion to close the public hearing for this item. Motion to close. Motion to close. Mr. Henrick, second Mr. Vigliotti. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Would, Mr. Chairman? I'm over here. Oh, Mr. Henrick. Would it make sense to, to address some of these other out of order or do That is probably a prudent idea. Is either counsel for current Volkswagen or George Purnham present? Okay, I will ask the applicant for Beach Drive. Do you have any problem if they would go ahead of you? No? Okay. It's going to be a, it's going to be a short application. It's going to be a short one. You know? You're going to be here all night either way. <laughs> so it might be Okay, guys, let's come to order. Let's come to order. I, I did, as much as I'd like to do, that um, Mr. Knott had approached me about it and made the request ahead of time. Let's stick to the way the agenda actually is, so let's just keep things moving. So, <laughs> item two, 40 to 60 Beach Drive and 24 Washington Parkway, petition of Platypus Partners, LLC, seeking a site plan review and special case approval to establish an outdoor entertainment and dining venue in a WF zone. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Just Members some of procedural the issue before we we start up. So, just for the record, this is a continuation of last month's public hearing. Um, the, we members had questions, and we wanted some additional clarification, so it was extended. Mm -hmm. So, the way it will work is you will have the floor to talk about your proposal. Um, we have comments and some official communications that we will go through. Uh, to make sure that that's entered into our public record, and then it will be open to public comment. Uh, the hope here is that, and we are, I've been advised by council that we are, uh, we really need to get this petition wrapped up today or in the next couple days because we have a statutory deadline. So um, we're going to ask that we try to move through this as quickly and efficiently as possible. So, Sasmina, do you want to go through the official comments that we've received first? Okay, I will yield to the, our town planner, acting PNZ administrator tonight. Yes, um, so um, between June 23rd and today, uh, we received 27 emails uh, from the public, 14 in support and 13 opposed to the proposal. We received Waterfront Harbor Management Commission's comments and um, they have you know, offered a denial as a recommendation. We also received Connecticut Deep's uh, recommendation letter this afternoon, and um, they seem to be okay with the proposal mm -hmm. as presented. Uh, we also have health department comments and uh, received certificates of mailing from you, mm -hmm. uh, like requested last time, and uh, also you have provided us an updated application summary and operating plan, too. Mm -hmm. I did, yeah. Okay, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, well, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Doug Grabe. I'm part of Platypus Partners, and I'm here today to talk about a special exception, zoning for the lots at, at 4060 Beach in 24 Washington. Um, I'm going to refer to those as Seawall Park because it's a lot easier to say than, uh, than naming the parcels. Um, I'd like to present our certificates of mailing. So these are entered into the record. And it was interesting watching Barry go through his presentation. So that's the way you're supposed to do it, and hopefully I can um, follow in his, uh, his footsteps here. Um, I, I passed out a folder to many. Everyone should have one. It's got some nice color pictures in it, and I'll try to speak into the microphone so everyone can hear. Um, and uh, it, it gives a summary of what we're, what we're proposing here, um, you know, why we're proposing it. Uh, should I go through that again, or is that what you've already heard last time. I, I want to be brief, but I don't want to be redundant. Should, should, should I go through the summary again or? Okay, perfect. So what we would like to do is secure a permit for an outdoor dining and entertainment facility with the working name Seawall Park at the lots I previously mentioned. Um, we feel this is consistent with the town of Stratford's plan of conservation and development, consistent with the historical use of the lots, consistent with waterfront zoning regulations, those lots are zoned waterfront commercial, 
and complementary to the area businesses, beneficial to the community to encourage use of the seawall area as an open air gathering space and outdoor recreation location. And with recent events with COVID, I think the more outdoor spaces we have, probably the better. Um, we feel that the environmental impact on the lot is minimal as operations would be housed in professionally modified and removable shipping containers anchored on existing permeable natural surfaces and all existing plantings and landscape materials will remain and be improved. Meaning that um, our construction impact on the lot is, is nil. I mean, we, uh, we, we basically have whatever we need to operate there now. So um, on, your, on the second page, there's a current as-built survey, letter size, and you can get an overview of the lot. I have larger copies if you like. Um, I believe you were all sent those prior to the last meeting. So um, kind of hard to read, but I have a, a, a blow up over here. I'm not sure the best way to do this so everybody can see and I can talk into the microphone. It's a little odd, um, but this is the lot. This is Beach Drive here. There's the ocean. We, we colored it blue. And um, we'll be going through the different colors that you, uh, that you see on, on, the, on the picture um, here. So currently, we're currently operating under uh, Governor Lamont's executive order 7 M, allowing, allowing for and encouraging for expansion of outdoor dining and beverage service um, through uh, our tenant little pub that we're located across the street. Um, we are also currently uh, using it for our other tenant, uh, Surfside Hotel. They are storing their, um, their, their paddle boards and their kayaks there for the use of their guests. And, um, you know, it's been going fine so far. Um, on the next diagram, you'll see uh, ex explanation of what the different containers are and their locations. So, um, under the diagram called Current Footprint, you can see the four shipping containers, A, B, C, and D. A is being used for uh, beverage, and, beverage and snacks and ice cream and uh, uh, you know, retail there. B is being used for on-site food preparation. C is being used for storage and retail. And D is being used for recreational equipment storage. So that's the use of the four containers there. They've been professionally modified. They don't look like something that came off a mayor's shipping container. Um, they're painted bright white. They have full electricity. One has full plumbing. And um, they are uh, about as nice as it comes if you consider shipping containers. And at the, ed at the, edge of, at the end of your proposal, you'll see some uh, modified ones that have been further modified. Um, there's 24 picnic tables on a crushed shell uh, surface. There's parking for 29 cars on a, uh, on a gravel lot. Um, there's parking for 18 bicycles um, there. There's uh, um, uh, uh, two porta potties um, from uh, GI John. Um, there's a hand washing station. There's a string lighting that's been built on maritime pilings. And there's a maritime style rope and uh, piling uh, barrier that, that surrounds the active part of the lot. So um, we, uh, we, we like the way it's looking. It's um, consistent with what you know, a nautical place might look like. And the, uh, the, the access, there's a pedestrian access off of Washington Parkway, you know, protected. And then the access to the parking lot is also off of Washington Parkway. Plenty of room to turn around. Um, there's 29 public spaces. I have auxiliary parking for five staff. So they can park behind the containers and make their, make their way around. Proposed uses, well, we want to continue, uh, we're trying to secure a permit for an outdoor dining and entertainment facility um, so that we can continue to provide food and beverage service there and then host events. And I think events has become the, uh, become the, the latest uh, buzzword. Um, and whether that's uh, uh, musicians or weddings or fundraisers or road races, I mean, or dog adoptions, I mean, we've... We're having a wedding in September there. We were supposed to have a, a dog adoption uh, last week and it got canceled because of rain. We had a road race there for charity on May 2nd. I sound like Barry, but we've actually done all these charitable events here. Um, so it's, nice, it's, it's a beautiful location. 
Um, and people really enjoy coming down there, and we want the ability to be able to continue to do that. So food would, would be a combination of either to-go from Little Pub or on-site food preparation. You might see a lobster shack there. If seafood prices ever come back to normal, we can certainly grill hamburgers and hot dogs there. The, the type of food that people are used to eating on picnic tables when they go to a seaside location. Um, for entertainment, we're applying for an entertainment permit because um, it's been Pandora's box. We didn't realize that Stratford had an ordinance on their books that prohibited entertainment. We have a liquor license that allows it, but um, Stratford has a, a special, uh, special, special law in their books that um, not everyone was aware of, including us, that you can't have live entertainment um, unless you have a special permit. And um, as far as I know, there's only one place in town that has one. So. Um, we want to play by the rules. We want to uh, make sure we're doing everything the right way. So we're applying for an entertainment permit so that when we do have entertainment, which is broadly defined as uh, it's not only musicians, it could be a comedian, it could be a, a magician, it could be an actor, you know, reciting Shakespeare, it could be a person doing anything, that's considered entertainment. Now, whether or not you find it entertaining, that's your personal preference, but that's all entertainment. So. Um, we, we just want to make sure we have the correct permitting in place so that we are playing by the rules and doing the right thing. Um, there's another picture there called future uses, and I debated putting this in, but I just wanted to share where we might be going with this or you know where we'd like to go with it. Um, we currently rent uh, kayaks and, and uh, paddle boards to hotel guests, or the Surfside Hotel currently rents paddle boards and kayaks to hotel guests. Um, we have had some interest from local entrepreneurs that would like to run a similar business for the public. We don't rent to the public because we just, we're, that's not our, that's not what, we, that's not what the Surfside Hotel does. They, they just want to rent rooms and make sure their guests are happy. So having the ability to, uh, for any resident or any visitor to go down and rent a paddleboard and go paddling around um, seems like a pretty nice use of the, uh, pretty nice use of the, of, of the location down there. Um, at the hotel, they also run wellness activities like beach yoga and, um, you know, therapeutic massages and those sorts of things. So um, having the ability for a third party to do beach yoga across the street would be also beneficial. It'd be on private property, not on the public beach. And um, again, that's not something we're, that the hotel is certainly in, is, is interested in doing um, just because it's not in the in the day-to-day -day operations running a yoga class. But it certainly would be nice to have a, a wellness class, you know, out there. Um, and, and thirdly, future use, uh, vendor space for craft vendors. So we've been approached by, um, you know, uh, people that design T-shirts or knickknacks or nautical sorts of things. And they'd like to set up a shop that, you know, people who are wandering by the beach might pop up and buy something. And so... Um, that type of activity is uh, just, it creates uh, an atmosphere, it creates, you know, an energy, as long as you're doing it right, you know, um, it's, uh, it, it, it'd be a nice day for anybody to walk down there and, and enjoy. So those are future uses. Um, to the extent they need permits, you know, we'll, uh, we'll come back and talk to everybody about that. I just wanted to make sure that everyone understood that it's not just about dining and entertainment, it's going to be about a whole holistic sort of seaside experience down there. So, here's the operation summary, and this is uh, the details that um, we were lacking last time I was here. Um, food and beverage service, we're asking for seven days between the hours of 12 uh, p.m. and 9 p.m. Um, and we've talked about the food service already. Uh, entertainment, this will be the uh, longer topic. So, um, we've requested for seven days on non-repeating days, in non-concurrent three-hour blocks, and stipulated between the hours of 12 to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 12 to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and 12 to 6 p.m. Sundays. So for example, acoustic musician Wednesday night, you know, five to seven, no entertainment on Thursday, and an amplified band, maybe Friday, six to nine. So, I, I understand the commission's difficulty in trying to decide how do we create something that doesn't exist? I mean, you don't have any frame or reference for this sort of operation in Stratford, as far as I know. So um, I'm used to, I'm used to uh, 
hey, tell me what I can do and I'll do that, not ask for something and then we'll, we'll tell you if it's okay. So it um, took me a little while to get my head around that. And in talking to the neighbors, and I've talked to many neighbors, um, and getting feedback from people in the area, um, not only Lordship, but in Stratford, um, I thought the prudent thing to do would be to put some pretty strict stipulations around it. Um, these are about as strict as I you know, could come up with. So in practical terms, you'd have music like two hours a day every other day. I mean, that's, and, and it wouldn't be every other day because some days it wouldn't make sense. Um, and the reason we asked for seven days is because you never know what day Cinco de Mayo might fall on, and it might be nice to have a, a mariachi guy down there or something. So um, it's kind of, uh, you know, we've asked for seven days. Will it be seven days? No, it won't be. Well, it couldn't be anyway, because it's every other day. It'd be two hours a day max, so it wouldn't be 12 to nine, 12 hours of music, it would be two hours. And um, if I can, uh, if, if the commission will work with me to further fence that in, I'd be happy to, to, to work with it. I mean, I know the nightmare of, I think it was Riverview, that Riverview Cafe that was mentioned last time. And um, I mean, certainly I don't have any, uh, I don't have any uh, intention of doing that, but of course we need to stipulate it. But when you think about it, we have a 27 room hotel across the street promoting wellness and you know relaxation. Why would I jeopardize that by putting some sort of crazy party pit next door? I wouldn't, I'm not stupid. Um, we're trying to create an, an aura down there, an atmosphere of, of you know, relaxation and, and welcoming and, and fun, frankly. I mean, you, know, you should be able to have fun, but fun doesn't have to be mean fun. Fun can just be, hey, I'm having a good time, you know, and it, it's nice to come down here. So um, in terms of amplified music or unamplified music, I know uh, that's another bugaboo. How, how, how is it going to be noisy with the neighbors? Um, we don't know until we try, right? But w as a condition of approval, I, I, I said, look, we'll build some sort of band shell. Now, I'm not saying we're building a band shell there, but some sort of barrier that would keep the music from reverberating backwards. We'll point all the speakers forwards, and any band shell or noise cloaking device would be removable and not there permanently. So we're not we're not proposing some sort of giant thing what we're proposing is look if there's a problem we'll solve it and we'll we'll abide by all health department ordinances in terms of decibel levels and everything else so um like some of those rules are clear so show me the rules i'll follow the rules some of the stuff is we have to make it up as we go along and i understand that's really hard i mean it's hard for everybody i just want to make sure that everyone understands what the intention is because I've read some stuff like we're going to get the Rolling Stones. And that would be awesome if we could get the Rolling Stones. I mean, I think we'd all be pretty happy. You'd all want to get tickets, and you'd all be my best friends. But we're not getting the Rolling Stones, so um, that, that's not going to happen. Um, in terms of uh, you know, amplification, there is a little uh, diagram there in your, in your, uh, in your package. Um, it's got a little guitar player in between container B and C. Um, there are some speakers marked. They're shooting the sound out over uh, Beach Drive, and um, you can see some sort of, looks like a V that's supposed to indicate the sound curtain or the sound, uh, sound cloaking barrier or um, band shell. So um, that's, uh, that's entertainment. Hopefully you were entertained. Um, and we'll go to the facility summary next. So, um, Again, well, I mean, we already kind of went through this, so I don't think we need to do it again, but at the, at the risk of skipping a page, temporary shipping containers, parking for uh, 29 cars and five, um, five, uh, five staff cars, you know, if needed. Um, in terms of seating, 24 picnic tables. Um, we estimate, uh, you know, in our years of operating restaurants, most parties are two or four people, and so the average number is three. So, you know, 24 tables times three people is 72 people. You know, 24 people times four people is 96 people. I don't know anyone that's ever sat six people at a picnic table. I think it's a physical impossibility. Um, it just, you'd have to really jam in there, and it wouldn't be very comfortable. So. My sense is, my estimate is, the max capacity of seats there would be 96 people, right? So I, I just don't know how we get past that. 
Uh, we have two portable restrooms on site. We talked about that. We have a garbage collection on site. Um, it's in conjunction with the uh, garbage collection at the hotel and the restaurant across the street. Um, exterior lighting is, is in the form of string lights on these, um, on these uh, poles, you know, so a nice little soft light there. Uh, it's operating procedure to turn those off after operations. Um, the lot is a, com and you don't care about this, but the lot's a combination of gravel parking, crushed shell, customer area, and natural sand border. We intend to keep everything that way. We like a nice permeable natural surface down by the water, not to disturb anything. Um, you know, there's some planting, some natural boulders. Um, we are, uh, you know, we've been blessed that Mother Nature is intent upon planting seagrass on the sand area. So we're going to let that grow because we think it's going to look nice. So what you'll end up with is a, um, is a green border around a, uh, around a, uh, a pink shell, you know, kind of area against a, um, against a, uh, you know, a, a, well, well, the gray parking lot and back and a big red English phone booth, phone booth plopped right in the middle for, you know, well, fun. Um, so, um, we, uh, you know, we, 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 we bought the lot, we, we cleaned it up. Um, you know, we'll continue to improve it. I've hired landscapers. I'm just not sure what is going to be, um, uh, appropriate or required if we need to plant screening, uh, plants for sound barriers, you know, I'll do anything down there. I mean, it's not like, um, we haven't already spent a bunch of money without a, without a, uh, you know, um, without an idea in mind. We, we own stuff, we clean it up, we take care of it. Same thing we did at the hotel. So that's, that's the business that we run. Um, we can go through Jay's questions. You know, I saw, uh, you know, I thought that was very useful um, when, uh, when, when Barry did that. So uh, his first question, you know, well, it's not a question. It says it conforms to the, uh, the, 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 um, the requirements of the district. So that's okay. Um, question number two, will the location, size, and intensity of such use be compatible and harmonious in relation to the size of the property and existing neighborhood development? Here you go. Okay, so that's the big question. Will it be? We think it will be. I mean, um, you're going to hear a bunch of comments tonight about stuff that happened, you know, uh, last year during COVID summer, which to me is an anomaly because, you know, and we've talked about that last time. Um, you know, here's the thing. We, you know, we opened in September, September 20th of 2019. Um, it's July 27th. That's like 677 days. 670. I don't know when leap year was, but in 677 days, you're going to hear about four events that happened. That is like a half of a percent of our operating. So. Um, you can read in the Connecticut Post about public urination and defecation. Um, as far as I know, uh, there was one, <laughs> one occurrence of public defecation um, in some lady's yard. And I spoke to this woman, and we had a very nice conversation after our last meeting. And I was like, look, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm horrified. I don't know why people would do that, but you, they didn't come from our place. We have four bathrooms. If our guests feel the need to relieve themselves, then um, by all means, we have four bathrooms for you. You know, use that. You don't need to go across the street. And, and, and furthermore, I, I'm like, I'm reading the paper. I'm going, it sounds like Bourbon Street down there. I mean, if public urination and defecation was such a rampant problem, I would know about it, and I would be complaining about it. And if I was the cause of it, you can bet the police and the health department would come down to me like a ton of bricks. But you know what? That sells papers. That gets next door posts going. And you know what? Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't take any credit for that, or I don't take any blame for it, nor do I take blame for smoking pot on the seawall. So I don't know about harmony with the neighbors, OK? We're harmonious with some. I think I have some support here. And we're not so harmonious with others. But I do know this. I have tried. I have reached out to everybody. You know, I made myself available every morning for, for a week and then for another week. I've had ice cream socials. I have, you know, met with people that opposed it. And have um, come, we've come to common ground once we actually talk. So um, we are willing to work with anybody. We are not trying to, uh, you know, enforce our way on anything. We want to uh, make sure that everybody's happy to the extent we all can be happy. Um, Long-winded answer to a question, which you're going to hear about an hour's worth of comments from next. Um, 
but I'll, I'll close that question with, you know, we may not all want the same thing, but we all don't want the same thing, and that's chaos at the seawall. That serves no purpose, and that is not what we are proposing at all. So if we can turn the volume down a little bit, which is an interesting metaphor, um, and then you know maybe talk and listen. You have two ears, one mouth. Listen, use your ears, and listen to what's being said. Then maybe we can get to some sort of harmony. That's my that's my hope. Um, Jay's third question. Okay, we meet we meet uh, the, uh, the 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 town of development. You know, so that's fine. Uh, fourth question: Will the design, location, and specific details of the proposed use adversely affect safety in the streets? or increase traffic congestion in the area, or interfere with the pattern of circulation. I, um, I'm throwing out last year because, you know, it was an anomaly down there. Those are the only two beaches open in Connecticut that people could visit. The town beaches were, were at half capacity, and if you didn't get there in time, you were shut out. State parks were, were full by 6 a.m. The only two beaches in Connecticut that I know of were the one in front of the hotel and the one on the other end of the seawall, and everybody in the tri-state area knew about that. So you had all sorts of people coming down. They weren't coming down to see us. That would be flattering, but once they got down there, of course, well, there was nothing to do because there's nothing to do down there except for go to Little Pub, go to Riley's, go get some pizza, go to Lordship Deli, or, you know, maybe go fishing. So they became customers, but it wasn't like we were bringing them down there. It was just... A influx of people with nothing to do and no public facilities on either beach. You know, we became the de facto public facilities and clearly some people chose not to use them. And you know what? I can offer you a bathroom if you need one, but if you don't use it, that's not, that's not on me. Um, so, you know, traffic, tra is, <laughs> there's never going to be enough parking down there. But I can tell you this, in this summer, this summer, you know, with the auxiliary lot at uh, 24 Washington, we've had a full restaurant and a full hotel. The hotel has been, has been full occupancy on weekends, so all 27 rooms packed, and the restaurant is busy, right? So we have the, the patio, the inside, and the auxiliary patio on the other side. I've had that place full, and the lot next door has been empty on weekdays. On, week, on weekend nights, it fills up, but it's not, a, it's not a constant problem every day. And when it fills up at night, it's auxiliary parking for people that, I'm, that are coming to visit us, ostensibly. I mean, some of these people are parking for Riley's, and I'm not chasing them out of there, you know, like, oh, you can't park here, I'm, you know, I'm, I got other things to do. But it's become a, uh, a relief valve for the, for the area, and I think that when you hear stories about Tangled Vine last year and the cars going up the street, um, that's, and last time I was here I said it's not going to happen again. It hasn't happened again, and that's not because we haven't had events at the lot. We've moved those events over to the restaurant. Just It's due to staffing, and the same people show up. So I think we've shown an ability to manage stuff pretty well. Remember, 678 days and, and four incidents that you're going to hear about. Um, that's a pretty good batting average. I mean, you know, we don't have the police coming to us all the time. We've never had the police called there for, for a customer, you know. So I, it's, it's, will it be harmonious, you know? Um, will, it, will it affect safety in the streets, you know? I, we, don't, we don't believe so. Um, will there be any emission of noise, light, smoke, odor, gas, dust, or vibration that may adversely affect land, water, or air quality? Yeah, if there's music, it may make noise. If it makes noise, we'll adjust the volume to be in line with whatever the town parameters are, which I believe is uh, 64 decibels, one foot over the property line. So that's why we propose building some sort of, you know, band shell, not a permanent band shell, but some sort of, you know, structure that will shoot the music over the, over the water, you know, and away from people's homes. Um, Will the proposed use adversely affect the tax valuation of neighboring properties as a result of the proposed use? I don't know. All I know is my assessment went up this year. So um, my taxes on my property down there has, has increased. Um, home values seem to be increasing. Um, you'll, hear, you'll hear both sides of the story. Some people like activity down there. Some people don't care for it. I mean, so... It really depends on where you are, you know, where, where you think. But I don't think it's all bad. I don't, you know, I'm not a tax assessor. All I know is my assessment went up. And, um, you know, I think we've improved the, uh, 
we've improved the energy of the neighborhood. Uh, will the proposed use create any fire or police hazards? We don't believe so. Um, no comments have been received from the fire or police department. We've never had to call the police down there for an unruly customer or any sort of issue. We've had the fire department down there for a couple of false alarms. Um, we run a nice business. You know, it's, it's full of, you know, it's a family restaurant. It's not some sort of, you know, um, some sort of, you know, uh, well, the, an the antithesis of or the, the opposite of a, of a family restaurant. I mean, you have people of all ages in there, you know, babies up until seniors. And um, most people like it. You know, you may not like the food, but you're going to get treated fair and, you know, uh, you'll get good value for your money. So, um, I, I uh, you know, I don't think it's going to create any fire or police hazards. You know, we, we haven't had them to date. We've been operation and... Uh, at other locations and you know we're just not that type of place otherwise we wouldn't keep expanding it so um that is the end of of my presentation happy to answer any questions you all might have okay questions from commissioners commissioner francis all right mine's uh, might be a little long so i might give give it a break take as much time as you need sir all right so i mean i'm, I'm a third generation Stratford resident Okay. All right, I've been here for since I was born. Yep. And we've always been to the, the seawall, Russian Beach, and there was never parking. Yeah. And that was with Marnix. Mm -hmm. My wife's family owned the rink that's no longer there. Yeah. Um, and there was never parking. Mm -hmm. So I want to understand how you figure adding 29 parking spaces but having events. 29, right? 29 parking spaces mm -hmm. and having events and also having what canoe rentals so i mean it's, it's going to be a substantial amount of traffic sure yeah. all right yeah. so that's my first point my second point is the safety you have uh, uh 24 benches for people sitting for the events yeah. uh well just for general use yeah. there's no sidewalks uh but they're fenced in i'm sorry i'll let you finish all right yeah. there's they, they might be fenced in yeah. but there is definitely safety issues I'm concerned about. Yeah. So I'm just giving you the opportunity because I, I've, I've been a promoter. Sure. I've owned a, a restaurant in Stratford yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not being against you, but I want to know these details because uh, they are concerns to me. Yeah. I, okay? I, I, yeah. And I'll let you answer those two first because I have a couple more. Are you going to save the best one for last? Well, that's a couple for last. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, in terms of uh, events, um, if we were having an event there and we thought there would be a bunch of uh, an influx of people, we would hire a valet and, and have them pack the, pack the lot. We've had valets in other um, locations. We have a restaurant in Wilton with a very small parking lot and a restaurant in, um, in Greenwich with a very small parking lot. And what the valets are able to do, um, it's, it's like, you ever seen that game Tetris? Or, you know, it's, it, it is, uh, I've seen them put 40 cars in a lot for 17 cars. And as long as people understand that's the protocol, you, uh, you can maximize the space. And um, look, let's be honest, people are driving around in SUVs. I mean, I've seen a lot, There's not, they're not good parkers, you know? So, I mean, if you can help uh, increase your space, you can increase the, the parking capacity there. So that's the way we would handle it if it, if it became a, a problem, Commissioner Francis. Um, the, uh, the, the, what was the other question? I'm sorry, I was looking uh, forward the, to your The safety third. of yeah. the patrons that are gonna be yeah. sitting around that barrier right near the street yeah. that are actually looking upon whoever's performing. Yeah. I mean, you have some posts there. Yeah, posts and ropes. Yeah, but posts I mean, ropes. but they are, I mean, the street is here, the seating area is here, there's a sidewalk here. So, I mean, they are, they are, gosh, that's gotta be, uh, these guys are 50 feet from the corner, these guys are, or 34 feet from the corner. So, um, and they're surrounded by ropes. So, you know, safety, we're all about safety. And, and in, in the proposal, if there's an event, we'll have, we'll have people there to manage it, right? I mean, we, we, we manage restaurants. We know how to, you know, corral people, you know, put them in the, uh, in, in, get them in the right slots and all that stuff. If we have to hire the police, if we, if we had an event, we had to hire the police, we'd hire the police. We had, we had the race in, on May 2nd. We had 150 people down there. Now, it was in the morning, but we hired a police officer because we had people running around the streets of Lordship. Wonderful day. I mean, they ran, a, they, ran a, they ran a 3K organized by a local guy. 
We gave all the money to Emerge, which is the local women's shelter. You know, so it's, we'll manage it. And you know what? It's not going to get out of control. If the cops need to be called, or if the cops need to be on site, it's probably not something we're going to do. Because who needs that? You know, if you think about the economics of, of, of having a band, you know, you got to pay them, well, you're a promoter, what, four or $500, right? You know, so four or $500, then you got to tack a uh, police officer on top of that. That's $350, $750 to sell, you know, $200 worth of extra food. It's not worth it. So we're not stupid people. You know, we're not going to have events just to have events. Y you may hear that all the events we had planned were liquor related. And there's a reason for that. And you might know this from your days of owning a restaurant. Um, the liquor companies have big budgets. So um, the dog adoption that was scheduled for this past Sunday was sponsored by Tito's Vodka. Tito's Vodka will pay for the person that, that has the shelter to come down and, um, you know, I mean, the, look, the people with the dogs, that's not free for them. They got to come down. They have to get compensated for that. So Tito's will cover that. They'll show up with all sorts of Tito's stuff for your dog, you know, that everyone can have fun Tito's giveaways. And um, you know what we have to do? We have to buy like $200 worth of Tito's. So it's, it's <laughs> the economics are like, that's the reason they're all liquor related because these guys have huge budgets. You look at, all the, look at all the umbrellas as you drive around Stratford. They all have liquor companies on them. Liquor company will sponsor a, a movie screen for a movie night. We did Jaws at the Beach last year, right? All socially distanced during those things, playing by the rules. Um, and that probably cost them $2,000. We had to buy $300 worth of Prosecco. You know, which we didn't even sell at the event. We sold it, you know, throughout the rest of uh, the rest of the week. So, um, Commissioner Francis, if economics, you know, don't make sense, we won't do it. We're, we're not trying to lose money to just have some kind of fun thing. I mean, we're a little bit past that. You know what I mean? Um, so, hopefully, that answers your question. I think I may have gone off topic here. Yeah. Well, no worries. Um, all right, so. In addition to that, my concern is also, from your, your uh, display, mm -hmm. you don't really show the aspects of the residents that live around that area. Right. So I took it upon myself to actually Google map the area mm -hmm. with the residents, sure. which I, I will give to you, Chairman. Um, if you really look at this, this layout mm -hmm. and what you want to do, which does not really describe the area and lordship, you have multiple residents right even right behind the parking lot and uh in the corner it, there's multiple residents there yeah. and as a promoter i know there will be bleed volume coming from those back speakers whether you point it to the sound or not then then we'll stop so we, we, we'll so, stop but it's, it's going is yeah. going to affect those residents sure so if they're coming home you don't know what shift they work yeah if they're coming home at at eight yeah or at seven mm -hmm. that event is still on live what if they want to just go to sleep so, How would you deter from, from disrupting their quality of life? We, we stipulate it. I mean, it's, you know, tell me when you want to stop music. I'll stop it then. I mean, you know, late, late at night, it, it, it doesn't, you know, I'm not trying to make anybody stay awake late at night. I was there today. There was music playing in the neighborhood. It wasn't from us, right? So, I mean, the time for music is when it's light out and people are out enjoying themselves on a late summer evening or, or a, a nice fall afternoon. That's the time for music. So I've asked for music later on the weekends just because, hey, you know what, uh, ask for it. You know, you can all say no. And I'd be like, OK, you know, we just won't do it. But um, how, how, would I, how would I work with the neighbors? I've been in touch with several of the neighbors. You know, one is a restaurant who's, who is having music, so I don't think he should have a problem with anything I would do. But I wouldn't have music on the same days he has music. There's no sense in having some sort of battle of the bands down there. Now that would require coordination, but I'll tell you this, I've talked to a musician that plays at his place, and I said, hey, you know what, why don't you just play on the corner and point the speaker over my way, and that way he can pay for the musician and I can <laughs> have my guests enjoy the, enjoy the music. I'd rather do that, Commissioner Francis, because that's better for our economics than paying some guy $300 to sing uh, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. It's a weird song if you ever heard it. So. Um, how would I talk to the neighbors? I've spoken to one of the neighbors who's directly, uh, I've spoken, well, I've spoken, you know, to one of the neighbors who's directly um, behind us. And, um, you know, I've reached out to everybody else on that street numerous times, saying, look, 
talk to me, tell me what your problems are, tell me what your concerns are, and let's address them. I'll tell you this, if it becomes, if the bleed back becomes a problem, we'll, we'll just unplug the amps, you know what I mean? We'll have an acoustic, he'll just have to sing louder, that's all it is, you know what I mean? It's, it's not like I am dyed in the wool, like I need some sort of rock band there, I don't. It would just be nice to have you know, some entertainment down there so we can have some event, you know, and there's some guy playing guitar. You know, you wouldn't hear it if he's back here, so it does require some amplification, but how much it requires, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see. And if it doesn't work, we'll go to plan B, you know? Yeah, and I'm not for or against you, but I just want to give you the opportunity to ask, answer yeah, some of these no, hard I, questions. I, I, yeah, I hope that answers your question. If you, I mean, I, I, I used to be a sound engineer, so uh, you were a promoter, I mean, we won't be pumping the bass, you know what I mean? So you're not going to get that, that reverberation and all that stuff. It's, it's hard to delegate that. What's that? It's hard to delegate that. No, I understand that. But, I mean, uh, most guys are acoustic guitars. It's mid-range, and you know what? It kind of drifts off into the wind, especially if you point it the right directions. We had a band there last year, country band, Boondocks. They weren't very good. Um, but the, um, the uh, speakers were pointed over towards the hotel. And the neighbor came over and she said, Doug, this is creating this huge echo. And I was like, holy cow, I didn't even notice that. And as soon as we turned them, you know, uh, south, southwest, the whole thing disappeared. So, um, and that, I think that band was like from four to, four to seven or something like that. So I don't want to cape anybody up working for their shifts. I don't want to, you know, you know, bother anybody. You know, we're just there trying to you know, uh, share a beautiful location with, you know, with people and, you know, what people enjoy entertainment, you know, and whether it is a guy playing guitar or a guy reciting Shakespeare or a, or a magician doing card tricks, you can't do any of that stuff unless you have an entertainment permit, you know, so um, maybe you want to come to a magic show, you know what I mean? I'd like to be able to have a magic show down there, so, okay. All right, I'll give somebody else an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from members? Uh, Commissioner Vigliotti, good evening, sir. Hi. Um, I, I, I have a couple of questions about your um, the proposal or the proposed food service. Um, so so uh, on, you have a couple of different proposals for food uh, and serving food. So um, one of the things that you mentioned was, I guess, having the food prepared at the restaurant and then brought across the street. Right. Okay, so they, one of the concerns I have is that there's not a crosswalk that goes all the way across Washington Parkway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, you know, that have you kind of done a traffic study for something like that or made a request to, to get that addressed? I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather prepare food on site. And we would have been doing it this summer, but um, maybe you've read about the restaurant staffing shortage, so we just have not been able, I've been having a hard time keeping a lid on the cooks that we have at our operating places. Um, the intent is to operate it on site like a lobster shack. We would have had lobster rolls there this summer, it's just lobster is crazy, you know, cold lobster rolls, but now we have a grill over there and I just hired a guy that, that, that can go over there and work. So um, that's why the beverage service is there too, so that you know, people can grab food and come over. And as long as they have food, they can get, they can get alcohol to go. That's still going to be a law for the next three years, according to uh, Governor Lamont. So um, it's a lot easier to get your food and then pick up your beverage, whether it's water or, or beer or you know, uh, Pepsi or iced tea, instead of walking across the street with that. So I've thought a lot about that. Um, you know, right now, uh, what happens is uh, if somebody orders to go at the at the table, um, one of our food runners will bring it across, deliver it, you know, um, by themselves. I suppose I could put them in a car, have them drive around, deliver it, and drive around again. Um, but in practical terms, how long would that last? So I've thought about it, but it's it's not a very. Um, there is one crosswalk that gets to the median. You know, maybe we can. I'll pay for it. I'll pay, we'll paint another crosswalk the other way. I mean, that's going to cost, you know, nothing. And if that helps keep people safer, I'm all for it. You can, you can sign me up for that. I'll, I'll paint the crosswalk. Do you have uh, the infrastructure in place already to do food preparation on site? On site, yeah. Well, in, in, in the closed container, there's hot water. Um, there's, uh, you know, uh, um, well, hot water so you can wash your hands. Um, we do have a grill in the open container, and um, I mean we're selling stuff out of there like chips, and you know once in a while there's a, there's sandwiches and stuff, but um, 
the best thing to do would be to prepare food off-site and bring it there to sell it instead of um, preparing it on-site. And, and I'm in the business, so I mean, pr preparation means I could make a bunch of sandwiches and bring them over there and sell them, or I could bring all the ingredients over there and build them from scratch there. I'd rather make them off-site and bring them over and sell them than, than build them from scratch there. Something like a lobster roll is easy. All you need is a hot plate, you know, some lobster, some butter, some rolls, and a grill, and there you go, all day long. So um, we wouldn't be frying french fries over there, but we, there are certain things that would lend themselves very well. Raw bar it would be great. You could put things on ice, you show up, you get a plate of oysters, go sit at your picnic table, eat your oysters, you know, have a nice day, and then, you know, go about your business. So um, I would prefer everything over there. That's the, that is the, uh, you know, I should have been more specific in the proposal, but I was trying to figure out a way to, not to thread the needle, but look, right now, that's what we're doing. Um, tomorrow night, there'll be a guy cooking hot dogs there, you know, so we'll, uh, we'll, well see how Well, how that does goes. that work? Like, is there, does he use propane? Is there a grill? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a portable grill there, a portable uh, flat top, you know, with a propane tank. It's covered under the thing. We use it at events all the time. He'll go over there. He'll clean it up. The hot dogs will be in the refrigeration and the cart next door. You know, he'll grill some. People will walk up or they won't. Um, and then they'll, uh, they'll get a hot dog. I was there last night, I had an ice cream social again, talking to the neighbors about what's going on, and um, people just walking up getting ice cream. We used to, I mean, we used to have ice cream in the lot at the hotel, and we, we moved it because we thought there was going to be a traffic issue there. You know, I, I was like, this isn't good, it was making me nervous, and we put it across the street, and just based on staffing, we haven't opened it up. But I was there last night for two hours. Um, granted, I was giving ice cream away, because it was an ice cream social, and it was come talk to me about what's going on. And um, people just wandering up, you know, this group of, group of kids, you know, they had no idea it was free ice cream. They're like, I'll take chocolate, vanilla, you know, uh, you know uh, raspberry uh, Italian ice. And they're like, what do we owe you? And I was like, hey, it's on the house. So um, then more kids came once that got out, but that was okay. It was just nice to see, uh, you know, families out there and, and people enjoying themselves on a beautiful night. So that's all for me for now. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Henrik. So um, I, I do see that there is a there is a crosswalk walk from your property, uh, the restaurant leading over to the parking spaces. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it crosses the street. It doesn't, does it, it doesn't go across the street, but I wouldn't imagine it would be difficult to I, have the state come in and add it. Or, I, I, I pay for it. I'll do it. Yeah. Give me the paint. Yeah. So just a comment when the house that the house up Washington Parkway from you um, that that abut to your property. Mm -hmm. I actually framed that house back when Allen's East was up. Yeah. And I remember the neighbors coming. They didn't like the guy who was the second house back. They didn't like him because he built too high of a house. Yeah. And they were upset because he stole the view of some other right. folks. So when when we started, and I wasn't the builder, I was just a framer. Yeah. Allen's East was going there. We'd, we'd go have lunch here all the time. Sure. Well, as we were framing the house, all the neighbors came and applauded us because we were blocking the view yeah. of the guy who blocked the view of the other people. Right. And they were, they were ecstatic that, that, we would, they would, that we would give some type of revenge to yeah. them. Payback. It was kind of crazy. but Karma. Um, yeah. you, you do have, and if you go around town now, and I, that's something I'll be bringing up later, if you go around town now, some of the restaurants, uh, because of the, I'm guessing, because of the COVID um, not restrictions, but what, mm -hmm. what COVID's allowed, they've actually moved their outdoor seating all the way out to the parking lot. When I was when I was on zoning the last term, probably eight years ago, we developed those regulations for outdoor seating. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I required, and we put in there, and we had some issues with your restaurant before it was your issue, and they had to comply with it, but it was, was a five foot space between the walkway. So if somebody in a wheelchair mm -hmm. came up to somebody walking, there would be ample space for those two people to cross. Right. Now, they, so since most of these restaurants now, if you, if, if somebody in a wheelchair comes along, they got to get, go all the way around, mm -hmm. use the handicap ramp, go all the way out in the parking lot, not good. and then go all the way around us, which is not good. So right. I, I'm, I was glad to see that in your proposal, you have that large bit of space there. Yeah. Um, but I, I had said this before, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of music. Um, I my daughter plays out a lot, so I see her. I like I love going to outdoor restaurants, hearing it. One of the biggest issues I have with acoustic music is typically the the, the, the people noise. Yeah. it's so loud you can't hear the acoustic music. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, and I don't know if if Riley's is an issue 
the, I, I love sitting outside at Riley's too, but the outdoor seating at Riley's, just the, the, the verbal noise and the clatter of, of normal day-to-day -day business creates mm -hmm. an issue. Yeah. And if the guy who took a dump in somebody's yard was coming from Riley's or the seawall after fishing, I, I don't know if he left the sign, just left. I don't uh, know. Or they saw But my, my issues with, with some of the things that you're proposing yeah. are volume. Right. Quality of life for the neighbors mm -hmm. and, and volume. So having a musician, and, and if you have Shakespeare, I ain't coming, but um, <laughs> um, but some people will. I can and, do it. And I don't know if you're aware, yeah. but that's a yeah. huge thing here in Stratford. Yeah. So, right. um, but that type of thing, you know, to me is acceptable. Acoustic music, acceptable. Sure. You you look like you've done some things to, or you will try to, but uh, amplified music in a, in a neighborhood setting like that. Joey sees. I know we used to get yeah. a lot of complaints from the from the people mm -hmm. at the docks, and then the people across the river. We weren't as concerned about the folks in Milford as we were sure. people on the docks, but we allowed them, you know, work. But the amplified music is loud, yeah. um, and it and it can be an issue. And for me, something like a wedding where you have a hundred guests, or um, an amplified music event where you have a band, mm -hmm. to me would create an issue and and cause quality of life issues that. Um, I couldn't support, you know, mm -hmm. for the neighbors. But if it was something like an acoustic thing in, in an afternoon or, you know, up till 8 o'clock on, on a weekday, you know, and, and you made the efforts, as, as you're saying, to do that, I might be able to get behind that. You know, <laughs> obviously you're over there now. You have people You have people there. I don't know we've had any police complaints, any, uh, any neighbors. I don't know that your outdoor seating is any louder than Riley's or the old Marnix or whatever it was that was the outdoor seating there prior to you guys owning it. Yeah. Because Marnix was there and it was an outdoor seating and right. they actually were allowed to go down on the sidewalk and yeah. a little bit out onto the beach. But yeah. so I, I don't know. So, so for me, it's, it's not necessarily all the bits and pieces. It's the noise that will come from it. And for me, that would need to be addressed so that the quality, there's always going to be crowds down. And, and if, if, if that area of town wasn't such a beautiful piece of t piece of property and a beautiful place to go, we wouldn't have crowds. Yeah. You know, if Riley's wasn't there, if you guys weren't there, if the beach wasn't there, if the seawall was there, we wouldn't have crowds. We have crowds because yeah. it's an awesome place to go and sit and, yeah. you know, what, feel the breeze and, you know, whether you're at a restaurant, whatever it is. But it's great that Stratford has popular places. But, sure. but addressing, and so that, that's, that's, we're never going to deal with that. You know, unless yeah. we shut down the restaurants and turn it into, you know, vacant land and then nobody wants that either. So, but, but the noise, so. Yeah, so the noise, um, like I, like I, like I, I told Commissioner Francis, if it's a problem, we just won't do it, you know, but I don't know what, I don't know what's going to be a problem. So, um, you know. I could go there and play a guitar and be like, okay, you know, how loud is it? And, you know, it, it's funny, uh, you know, one of the neighbors I was talking to, um, there was a jazz trio in front of the deli on Sunday. Hmm. And one of the first things he told me was the decibel level. And I was like, <laughs> great. I mean, but that's the thing. I mean, everyone's hypersensitive to the decibel level. I mean, it's just, I'm hypersensitive to it too, right? I mean, I... Uh, you know, we come in peace, we mean no harm, we're trying to make a nice place for everybody, mm. visitors and residents, you know. Um, visitors seem to like it. I got a feeling in my heart of hearts, the residents that don't like it will come around or, you know, be like, oh boy, boy, what were we worried about? You know, you could worry about aliens invading, you know, just because they haven't invaded doesn't mean they're not up there looking at us, ready to invade. I mean, I could worry about all sorts of stuff that wouldn't happen. I saw Jaws in 1977 as a kid. I couldn't swim in a pool. I still can't. I think, you know, I'm going to turn around. There's going to be the, the shark there. So fear is the most powerful emotion there is, right? And fear is also irrational most of the time. It's based on biases of, hey, you know, this is what might happen. They might bring that type of person down here. I got an email from a woman today off of next door. Oh my God, what a toxic waste dump that site is. But she sent me an email and she, I, I had sent her a copy of the plan you all have today because she reached out saying, I don't support this. And I was like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Please look at my plan. And then if you have any questions, happy to discuss with you. And she sent me back an email wondering if I was going to have metal detectors because these people are carrying and you know what's going on. I'm like, you didn't read a thing that I sent you and your fears that there's gonna be people down there with guns. 
I was like, I got news for you. Probably half of the homes in Lordship have guns, you know? So, you know, the people are not going to come down here with guns. They're, uh, you know, coming down here to have a lobster roll and a, and a Pepsi. So it's that sort of mindset which has inform unfortunately permeated everybody. Everyone's scared of the unknown. Um, the aliens might shoot down tonight. I don't know, but we're here just to, you know, have a nice time, run a nice business, and enjoy a beautiful piece of, 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 of the country, of, of, of Stratford down there, and make it available for everybody. Because the other thing I hear a lot of, I mean, look, you want to shut the businesses down, there are some people that want to put, would love to put gates up on Lordship and keep everybody out. And unfortunately, we, you know, fortunately, we can't do that, so let's find a way to get along. Noise, I won't make a lot, I promise. Do you, do you know, I mean, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but um, on weeknights down at Paradise Green, they have amplified bands. You know, we get probably a couple hundred people there. Mm -hmm. Do you know how they deal with the neighbors when they do that, how they deal with the sound? I mean, I've, I've, I've been walking and driving by. I know that I don't find the music offensive, but. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I don't have a decibel meter. I don't, yeah. I, but I'll, I'll go check it out. If someone's doing it successfully, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. And yeah. if, if we can't do it successfully, we won't do it. I mean, that's, that's my promise, and you can stipulate that and, you know, come down to me like a ton of bricks if I, if I break that promise. And, Just, and I'm not saying I'd be in favor of yeah. mimicking what they're doing down at Paradise right. Green. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's a town-run event anyway, yeah. but um, that's, a, that's a residential area, and, and, and it's, it's a ton of fun. And I think the neighbors, I know the residents, uh, they come down, but I'd just be curious if you had any insight on that. I, 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 I'll yeah. have to go check yeah. it out sometime. But I, and again, I wouldn't be in favor of you mimicking that. But I, won't, just, I won't mimic it. I'll just go check it out because it sounds like it's fun. And what's wrong with a little fun, right? So this is fun. Not really, but it is. Yeah. yeah. Commissioner Manos, you want to have any questions? No. Okay. All right. Uh, a couple questions that I have. Uh, first of all, I, I will compliment you. Um, much better presentation. This is better than last month. So I learned from I, watching I, Barry too. Yeah. I, I, Barry spends a lot of time here, yeah. so yeah, he is sort of the uh, the authority. So I, I thank you for the diligence that you did in presenting a much more comprehensive report. So thank you very much. Um, so let me understand a couple things about the food service and um, the food and drink service on the property. Let's start with that. So um, it says food service would be a continuation of little pub dining in a to-go method with on-site beverage service and ice cream snack bar offerings. Hot food orders will be taken by servers and sent directly to the little pub kitchen. Uh, via QR code and guess we would enjoy the meals delivered to their tables in a to-go fashion. So as I understand it here, um, when you say uh, snack bar offering, so you're considering doing hot food preparation on the site, is that hey, correct? Correct, correct, okay. yeah. Um, there was a comment in the, uh, the health director's comments, I'm not sure if you've been in receipt of those, that says that any of the type of food preparation might require additional uh, licensing. I wouldn't be surprised, yes. Okay. And we, we, we work with them whenever, mm -hmm. whenever necessary. Yeah. Okay. Now, with regards to uh, beverage service, and let's mm -hmm. talk specifically um, alcohol, and I, and I realize, and maybe our, our, our town attorney could, could help me through here, the laws have, are in a little bit of a state of flux since there's the executive orders that are supposed to cover. I was unaware that they have a three-year duration. I thought that was just the, to the point where they expire, but if, I, I, I don't know if yeah. maybe whoever somebody, I'm, I'd appreciate some clarification as to how far that extends. Yeah. In addition, what I'm curious about is, does your current liquor license, is it limited to your, to the uh, little pub restaurant facility or does it account for the adjoining property that is in question tonight what would end up what right now under 7m we mm -hmm. can operate with our liquor permit across the street um, when we went to a permanent zoning we would apply for a separate liquor permit mm -hmm. because the idea would be that you uh, right now when if you if you get um, something to alcoholic to drink over there. You can get a mm -hmm. Pepsi, you get whatever you want, and, and you can drink those all day long. Right. But if you want a beer, you have to have food with it. 
And so Mm -hmm. um, that is what has been extended until 2024 Mm -hmm. to go alcohol. So you can't go to a restaurant and be like, give me a six pack of Budweiser. Correct. You have to get a a pizza and then you can get a six pack of Budweiser, Mm -hmm. which which, you know, really made the liquor stores angry. But, you know, for restaurant owners, you know, hey, why not? You know, so um, and for consumers, it's a good convenience. So Lamont has extended that through 2024. Mm -hmm. and who knows, that may be a permanent thing. I think they'll see it doesn't do a lot of harm. So in other words, um, if you came to the restaurant and got to go food, mm-hmm. um, you just came in and said, give me a burger okay. and I'll take a couple, um, I'll take a couple line and Googles because those are fun to say. Um, and then you walked across the street, you're perfectly fine. Um, if you come to the container, you know, when like cornhole is going on and you want to have a beer, you have to buy food. So it, it gets a little convoluted. You can walk into the restaurant and just get a drink, but you can't get a drink to go unless you're ordering food. And you can't go to a uh, 7M, you know, extended outdoor dining facility and get a drink without getting food. Mm-hmm. So... I yeah. mean, it is, it's a lot to handle, but um, we, uh, we, uh, you know, we, 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 we handle it. I mean, we just, that's, you know. We're, we're not, More specifically, so the, yeah. at the time you got your liquor permit, you did not own the subject property. You were just exclusively at the restaurant. Is, is that true? But that's correct, yes. So then they are considering that this is, in fact, a separate lot. Yes. Even though it's owned cooperatively it's a separate lot Mm -hmm. so you're saying that the the liquor permit now extends to this lot only during please only during seven double m only during seven yeah and and that that was that our operation over there was Mm -hmm. approved by the health department the zoning department the police department the fire department um anything we've done over there has been with the appropriate department the Mm -hmm. The, the containers were anchored to the ground at the direction of uh, the building department. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've had everybody over there. Everybody's fully aware, and I have all the signatures, and there's a permit in the container. So um, people may not like that, but that's what we're legally able to do right now under 7M. Um, and 7M goes until March of 2022, I believe, unless we get a Delta spike, and Lamont might say, hey, you know what? This is a good idea. We'll keep going. But I don't want to run a business based on COVID, uh, you know, uh, you know, regulations. And yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just like mm-hmm. I need some certainty in my life, you know. So I'd like to know, know. what I'm what I'm doing. And uh, please, you'll have a chance. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mr. McInnes, can we have order in the chamber, please? I'm talking to the applicant. Yeah. I'd like to be able to finish this dialogue and answer my questions. Okay. Proceed, sir. I lost my place, but um, okay. I'd like certainty. I'd like to operate under there under its own steam so I don't have to rely on, mm-hmm. you know, hard to understand government mandates and, um, you know, any sort of misconception or, you know, uh, you know uh, questioning of what it is we're doing over there. Now, uh, in regards to seating, um, I wanted to talk about that. In your facilities plan, we have 24 removable picnic tables, average ac- occupancy of three persons, four, um, and, blah, and so on. Um, do you envision ever having a situation where it would be bring your own chairs or what was commonly known in the day as festival seating, where it's standing room crowd? One, I, I can think of one instance where that might occur if we do a movie night mm-hmm. and people were coming down with their beach chairs to, to, to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, we, would, we would move the, the, the chairs to the side so they could sit down and, and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. But um, we, would, we, you know, we could say, hey, look, you just got to keep the seating the same, right? So you can't have 200 people there. You got to keep, you know, you know, 72 or 96, which is plenty of people to watch a beach movie. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, so we'll work with whatever parameters there are. I mean, I'm, I'll, you tell me, hey, Doug, you got 96 seats? Great, we've got 96 seats. So if you had a entertainment, and I know you spoke about the definitions of that, and you gave a couple of examples, yeah. um, would you typically uh, do it as sort of a, um, uh, on a ticketed basis, like an Eventbrite thing, where at a certain point you would stop capacity to make sure that you didn't have a, a blowout crowd that showed up for something? 
Um, I, I suppose we've never done that before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mo it's mostly it's atmospheric. You got some guy, you know, you know plunking away on a guitar, and you know you can't hear him because the people are talking, and you know, it's just atmospheric. You know, so um, we don't sell tickets for that. Um, mm -hmm. When we've had other bands in there, we never charged a cover for it. You know, well, not necessarily yeah. a charge. I'm just saying yeah. so that you have you would to know exactly to manage your crowd size. And yeah. if somebody says, "Oh, guess what? It's sold out. I can't go." Yeah, they're not going to make the trip down and I, be disappointed okay. I, and I, then try to hang in there I, and I fit in someplace. Gotcha. Okay, okay. so uh, we we have not historically done that. We certainly could because we do that with the other events there, mm -hmm. like the bubbles and brunch. You know, where people came down and did a Mother's Day bouquet and had some Prosecco. There was only 50 seats available for mm -hmm. that. Um, the cornhole is, uh, the cornhole tournament is, I think it's like 12 teams or, I mean, so, it, you know, there are limits to things. Yep. It would certainly be, you know, easy for us to say, hey, we're having, uh, you know, um, the Rolling Stones down here and we only have 50 tickets, but they're $500,000 a piece, but you know what, I mean, we might sell them. I mean, that's a horrible joke because everyone's going to take that seriously, but um, we could we could certainly mm -hmm. we could certainly restrict admission. It's easy to do, especially in in today's in the technological days. world. Oh, yeah. All sorts of things are possible. All, all, everything is possible. Okay. Everything is possible. Um, I think that's got most of mine. Most of the other commissioners caught some of the things that I wanted to ask. So last chance, any members? Okay. So what we're going to do now is uh, we'll do into the public comment phase, and you will get a chance to do a rebuttal at the end. So okay. stay tuned. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so earlier, earlier before, and I'm sure not everybody was aware of it, there actually was a, a small sign-up sheet. So there's a number of names. I'm going to go through them. When I'm done with them, then it'll be... For, you know, raise your hand and I'll call you up individually just to keep things moving and a little orderly. So the first name on the list is David Driscoll. And everybody just give your name and address so that we know who you are for the record. Thank you. Sure. Good evening. My name is David Driscoll. I live at 59 Jefferson Street in the Lordship area. Uh, I prepared some remarks, which I'm going to go through quickly, but I, I want to respond to a couple of things Mr. Grave just said that weren't necessarily in his plan that was posted on the site. Um, there was no mention anywhere in the plan of his intentions for future liquor sales. Um, if he's got uh, a popular band down there that stops playing music at 10 o'clock, if you approve his permit, um, there's no saying that the 200 people that are on the property are going to go home at 10 o'clock. They're going to be there until the bar closes. And if he gets a liquor permit, it's likely the bar will close at 1. So that's just one comment. The second co uh, comment is I'm not scared of the unknown. I know what's going on down there last year. Uh, there were a number of bands that Mr. Gray brought on to the public sidewalk playing music onto the old Martinix Beach. Uh, I, for one, called the police because of the noise. So when Mr. Grabe says nobody ever called the police, that's not factually correct. Um, the last meeting I put into an exhibit that showed a picture of a large crowd on the seawall and on the beach during one of the events. I took the liberty today of providing a... Uh, Two exhibits, they're actually out of the website of two bands. Um, Mr. Gray would like you to believe that he's going to have some guy, as he says, plunking on a guitar with acoustic music. Tangled Vine has been scheduled this year. Green-Eyed Lady played this year. These are out of their website. You can see they're uh, popular rock and roll bands that are going to attract more than... Uh, the 74 people that might be sitting at the picnic table, and I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of people standing around. So anyways, uh, some facts. Oh, one, other, one other point. The noise mitigation that Mr. Grabe speaks of, hanging up a sound cloaking devices or whatever, and pointing the music to the southwest. If you Google the prevailing wind direction in western Long Island Sound, it will tell you that from May through August, the prevailing wind direction is south to southwest, which means as he's trying to send his music over the sound, the wind coming from the south and southwest are going to take that noise right back into the neighborhood of Lordship. Okay, so some facts. Beachbound Properties purchased uh, a residential lot on the corner of Beach Drive and Washington Parkway in an RS4 district on April 19, 2020. The property was and always has been a residential property. 
The property is located in the coastal management areas defined by Chapter 444 of the Connecticut General Statutes, which sets requirements for this area. Within the blocks surrounding this subject property, we have residents that include the elderly, child, young children, and um, people who are fighting serious illness. And we're asking to allow music seven days a week in their backyard. So in July of last year, um, the Planning Commission voted against a petition for waterfront zone for that property. And they cited safety concerns, traffic issues, and limited parking uh, that would prohibit resident access to the waterfront. On July 22nd, this commission last year approved the petition to convert the WF zone without a plan being presented. And I recall at that meeting and in the minutes, it said that traffic and safety issues would be addressed when a plan was uh, brought forward and that nothing could happen on that property until a plan was brought forward. Yet, there's an awful lot been going on down there this year and there's nothing been approved by the Zoning Commission. Okay. On July 14th this year, the Waterfront Harbor Management, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Silvey, Mr. Silhavy, you indicated in that previous meeting that we're, um, the Waterfront Zone is one of the most restrictive zones and that there were a number of things that put a very high threshold to approve any use under this uh, zone. So I would just want us to remember that. So the Waterfront Harbor Management Commission uh, on the 14th of July did not make a favorable recommendation uh, due to concerns regarding the potential impact of the proposed use. Specific concerns noted were potential noise and other nuisance impacts, adequacy of available parking to support patrons, traffic congestion, diminishing availability of parking in the seawall for the general public. They found the proposed project is inconsistent with the quality of life and public access provisions of the Harbor Management Plan. So, I went online and I printed down all the information that Mr. Gray posted after the last meeting so we could understand what, what he intends to do. And a decision to approve or disapprove this petition should be governed by the Stratford zoning regulations in alignment with the Town of Stratford Plan of Conservation Development, Connecticut General Statute, uh, Chapter 444, and the Stratford Harbor Management Plan, and I know that's your charter. Uh, I've reviewed his plan against the requirements for the waterfront district. And in summary, this plan is not a water dependent use and it falls far short of the parking requirements. I reached this determination as follows. Connecticut General Statutes in Section 3 and 8 of the zoning regulations establish the requirements for development in coastal management area. It requires the development in a WF district must be a water dependent use. In Platypus Partners CAM application, Platypus responds to the question, is the project a water dependent use as defined in section 316 of Connecticut General Statute 22A-93? The answer was no, it's not a water dependent use and that was their application. The project presented does not meet the definitions of a marine use as defined by paragraph 8.2.1 of the Stratford Zoning Regulations. Non-marine uses permitted by paragraph 8.2.2 are restaurants and retail service establishments only as part of a mixed use project. I don't believe this is a restaurant, but if somebody wants to look at it way, um, the zoning regulations in section eight define a mixed use, mixed, oh, excuse me, mixed use project as one in which the marine use component requires a greater number of parking spaces than the non-marine use. So mixed use, in this area requires a predominantly marine type project. If Platypus is presenting the project as a restaurant, it must also, by the uh, zoning re requirements in paragraph 3.1.1.3, uh, two additional amenities, I think there are six or seven amenities listed in that, uh, in that paragraph, which um, looking at his proposal, he does not, okay? And so as you go through those regulations, if it's not uh, a water dependent use and it's not a restaurant that has the two amenities, then it would be considered a prohibited use per paragraph 8.2.3 of the zoning regulations. And then on paragraph 8.4 uh, requires that architectural plans 
be prepared by a professional architect and must address the relationship of the development to the waterfront as viewed from the water and adjacent public streets and site design linkage between the proposed development and the surrounding neighborhood. No such plan is part of this application. Paragraph 8.4 also provides that the Zoning Commission shall review each site design to ensure sufficient le uh, level of upland support facilities, one of which is parking. So parking requirements are established in Section 12 of the Zoning Relations, and it says, I quote, they shall be sufficient to accommodate the motor and other vehicles of all occupants, employees, customers, and other persons normally visiting such buildings at any one time buildings or a lot at any one time. Paragraph 12.5.5 sets the requirements for auditoriums, theaters, and assembly halls of one space for every four seats or for each 200 square feet, whichever is greater. Calculating using the seats method is impossible because of the large gathering area between the picnic tables and the uh, containers, which would potentially be occupied by standing uh, standing patrons. So using the square foot method, if you assume that a third of his 27,974 square foot lot is dedicated to the 29 cars parking, you're left with approximately 18,000 plus square feet of property to be occupied by patrons listening to one of these bands that he brings in. Uh, if you use the 200 square foot calculation, his required parking would be 94 parking places, not 29. Okay, so in closing, the Planning Commission's already ruled that this uh, site shouldn't have been commercially developed because of the limitations of the site. The Waterfront Harbor Management Commission have assessed the specific plan is in conflict with the Harbor Management Plan. If this commission performs an objective assessment of Platypus Partners' proposed use against the requirements of the zoning regulation, it would be impossible to approve this petition as presented. One last point. The Waterfront Harbor Management Commission pointed to the potential of nuisance noise to disrupt the quality of life in a neighborhood. I ask you to consider the fact that your zoning regulations, paragraph 3.17, prohibit me in a residential area from having a loudspeaker at my pool that can be heard beyond my property line. That's in your regulations. Yet you're considering an application for amplified music in an area surrounded by residential neighborhoods. Seems a little bit inconsistent, doesn't it? Thank you. The next speaker is Gary Nelson. Hi, my name is Gary Nelson. I live at 76 West Hillside Avenue. Let me start by stating that I am not anti Little Pub. Little Pub has been a fine addition to the seawall. The quality of the food is good, the prices are reasonable, the ambiance is excellent. What I am opposed to is the application by Platypus Corporation to create a freestanding outdoor music venue. I would like you to envision what this would look like located at the corner lot across from the seawall. Large crowds with no ability for crowd control because of the open space involved and the lack of barriers. Crowds spilling over and across the street to the actual seawall. Ironically, much of that crowd will not be patrons of Little Pub, but rather people hanging out, bringing alcohol from home, and smoking pot, which I can remind you is now legal in Connecticut. Traffic congestion with cars attempting to drive onto Beach Drive, inability of pedestrians to walk on the sidewalk, walk their dogs, stroll with their infants, enjoy the view, or watch the sunset. The Little Pub on their website says they want the seawall for all, but in reality, they want the seawall for the Little Pub. I am a nurse who has spent the majority of my 45-year nursing career working in the emergency department. I have personally witnessed countless examples 
where crowds plus alcohol plus drugs equal a recipe for disaster. I won't take your time detailing the many tragedies which I have witnessed over the years as a result of this combination. There's a famous quote, and I quote, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. We can cite many examples from history of crowds and alcohol and drugs leading to these disasters. However, we need to look no farther than the recent crowd control incident at Harborside right here in Stratford. The proposal to rename the lot Seawall Park brings to mind Seaside Park and the infamous gathering of the vibes. Who will police it? What is the town's liability? In closing, I would ask you to vote on behalf of the grandparents who are strolling with their grandchildren, the young parents walking with their small children, the teenagers riding their bikes, runners, walkers, senior citizens, nature lovers, and all those who would like to use the seawall without having to navigate through the crowds of individuals who, as we say in the hospital, are in an altered mental status. I fear, I fear that if this proposal is passed, you will look back at some point in the near future with regret about this decision. Thank you. Ann Ferris. <laughs> Thank you. Several weeks ago, I spoke to the Waterfront Harbor Management Commission, so some of my remarks tonight will be duplicated, but are certainly necessary to repeat. I am probably the only one in this chamber that has lived in the same house directly across from the seawall and the beach park for 45 years. I own the sign of the Gull Restaurant, formerly named Skipper's in the early 80s, and sold it to the Ussolini family and was re renamed Allen's East. So I have seen a lot of changes throughout the years, and we know that we are living in a period of change, not only in Lordship, but around the country. We need controls along with all of this change. I have a folder with emails that I sent to town officials in the 70s. Today I could just change the names and resend them. We also had a small group of neighbors and began the Seawall Association. I have an agenda uh, from that period of time and the date was 5-24-06, the time 7 o'clock. Our guest that evening was Michael Julian and he was our first district council person. Our discussion items were frequency of rubbish pickup at the seawall, health issues concerning rats and cats, enforcement of police of 10 o'clock p.m. seawall parking, weekend police patrol, inappropriate sexual behavior in and outside of parked cars, control auto speed by installing speed bumps, restrict seawall parking to town residents auto stickers, Autos and vans using Washington Parkway and seawall area for day and overnight parking. And install new no parking and one-way signs and the maintenance of existing welcome to Lordship sign on Washington Parkway. The rules were there for all to see. Some of our major issues are, to name only a few, traffic and a lot of it, cars driving the wrong wrong way on many of our streets. We need a traffic and parking study done in this very congested area. I can't imagine wait staff trying to cross Washington Parkway with food in hand for customers seated at the seawall park waiting for their food. Incoming cars are trying to park on crowded Washington Parkway and in the little pub two lots. Drivers are looking around to find a parking spot, hardly paying attention to any wait staff ready to cross the street. Beach Drive is also packed with cars and people, another accident waiting to happen. Speeding cars and motorcycles not only in the seawall area, but all through Lordship. Excessive noise, boom boxes during the night and day, and now big bands are being scheduled even without a town permit. When I owned the sign of the Gull restaurant in that same location, there was a town ordinance and was told there could be no outside music. That has disappeared. If so, how has it changed, by whom, and when? 
alcohol. Many people are walking across the street with drink in hand after purchasing it from a restaurant or bringing it in the trunk of their cars. Open drinking is everywhere. Outside, the two restaurants in the street, on the beach, and the seawall, which the town of Stratford owns. Is the owner of the little pub licensed to sell alcohol in Seawall Park? If not, who is? Scooters are found everywhere, just left and drop on the ground and in the streets just waiting for another accident to happen. Trash all over the area for neighbors in town to pick up. Even rats are now seen. And in past years, traps have been used to rectify this very unhealthy situation. There was a large, beautiful sign at the end of Washington Parkway stating, Welcome to Lordship Beach. Also printed on the sign were the rules of the beach. No dogs, loitering, alcohol, fishing, littering. Where is this sign and why wasn't it replaced immediately? And believe me, we all tried. Where are these, where are these rules for the two other beaches and there is no one rule for the two beaches in Lordship? Where is it certainly not congested? I have a picture of the sign and will include it with the remarks to the commission that you have. Rules must be enforced. They're necessary for control. This area is wide open with no controls. Many cars and people who want to enter this already congested area are allowed. Parking may be the only limitation, but there is really no effective way to limit or control this un unsafe situation. How many extra police will be needed just to keep order? and the town liability might go to an all-time high. We can ask ourselves, what benefit does the town of Stratford and its residents receive? And we can answer that. More issues for public works, police, and the health department, and a greater cost to the homeowner. The resources of the town will, will certainly be stressed. The question remains, are we losing our neighborhood? All of this change seems like a very large plan for a very small part of lordship. Our town, of, uh, town officials have helped painting a pedestrian walkway, one-way arrows on some streets, and parking on half of the seawall for Stratford residents only. But we need everyone to help keep the quality of life that we all deserve. The area with its changes through the years is our little piece of heaven, and right now our personal enjoyment of the natural beauty is being destroyed. In closing, the Lordship Improvement Association sent a letter to the town officials on June the 22nd expressing their concern for certain issues that have been mentioned tonight. I hope the LIA with this mission statement that states, we shall endeavor to preserve and enhance the original quality of life and character of the Lordship Waterfront community and improve the quality of life for all residents of Lordship. I hope they will stand by their statement. We need our entire community to help to save this special part of Lordship so that all of us have the quality of life we deserve and pay for. Why should some Stratford residents' quality of life be in jeopardy? Thank you very much. Ed Kingston. Next speaker is Ed Kingston. Thank you, sir. Hello again. Um, I was here last, last month uh, to talk about the Little Pub. And as people here probably know, um, I do favor what they're doing down here. And I just wanted to go over some of the things that were talked about today. Number one, I want to talk about the. Sure, is that better? Excellent. I want to talk about the issues. I know you're going to hear it, you've already heard it, and I'm sure you're going to hear it a, a number of other times, the different issues um, uh, that. Uh, keep coming up. I also want to talk a little bit about, and you're not going to hear a lot of this tonight, uh, about the positive impact that Little Pub has had on our community. Um, and there's a lot. There's a lot of great stuff that they have done. I also want to talk a little bit about the importance of music in Lordship, right? Because, well, I guess you could laugh about that, but I was at the uh, Blues at the Beach, right? Uh, we had, uh, you know, a New Orleans jazz trio just show up at, at the marketplace. Seems to me it's, it's pretty important to us here with Lordship. I know it's important to me in my life. I also want to talk about consistent and fair implementation of zoning. That is, you know, holding one person to one standard and allowing others to do other things throughout our community. In Lordship, 
and through all of Stratford. And then I want to talk about what we have in terms of our zoning laws for live music today or for music outside, because maybe it's time that we change that. So let's talk about these issues. Number one, parking. When it comes to parking, they're proposing 30 new spaces. He's, act, he's just committed, I, I think I heard this correctly, that he was going to limit the seating to 96 people. That's far better than any of the standards that we have in our zoning right now in terms of the number of parking spaces for patrons in a, in a restaurant. Seems to me he's doing us a very big favor. I think one of the things that we did that was not a good favor was when we took all those parking spaces and made them Stratford only. I go down to the uh, to seawall all the time. I live very, very close, eight, beach, eight shoreline drive. I can throw a rock and hit little, I wouldn't do it, dude. I won't, right. but uh, I, I could throw a rock and hit his place. I'm down there all the time, and I can tell you on Friday and Saturday nights, the busiest times, the only spaces that are available are the spaces that are reserved for Stratford residents. And what's happening is the people who are not from Stratford are starting to get creative with their parking, right? Because we only have the spaces reserved for those people on parts of Washington Parkway, parts of Hillside Ave, and parts of First Avenue, all right? And so people are starting to park farther out. I think we've kind of created our own problem there. And we owe it to the people of Lordship to do a study on parking and to get that solved once and for all. But that's not a problem that the gentleman behind me created. Trash, everyone talks about trash all over the place. I'm sorry, I'm there all the time. I leave my house first thing in the morning, take my dog Roscoe, big dog, for a nice walk through the uh, seawall. I don't find one lick of trash at Little Pub. That place is immaculate. It is immaculate. When I walk along the seawall, I was quiet for you, please. Folks, I was quiet folks, for you. Please, please let the gentleman continue, please. I, you know, I'm kind of new to Lordship. I'm kind of new to Lordship, but where I come from, people weren't rude like that. Thank you. You know, some, some people have different views. I have a different view. I have different values. And when it comes to, you know, enjoyment out of where I live, maybe it's different than yours. I, okay. But let's not be rude to each other. As, as, when I walk through the, the, the uh, uh, seawall, there are days that the trash is, is full. But I can tell you, the DPW, the Department of Public Works, does a pretty good job. And I can also tell you each of their first names, because I always say hello to those guys, because I'm like, thanks for picking up the trash. All right? And they do a great job with that. Um, and then if you stop to think about what Little Pub is saying, what they're doing is they're putting some outdoor dining out there. They're going to run their, their stuff over. And I can tell you that sometimes I can't get a reservation over at Little Pub because it's full. I can't get a, a reservation at Riley's. Is Rich still here? Rich? All right. Be because they're full. What's going to happen is that place is going to end up being an overflow. People are going to eat there. Where's their trash going to go? Their trash is going to go in the receptacles he's got on that area. Right? He's doing us a favor when it comes to trash. Noise. I get it. I understand. And I don't want to be woken up or have things happen all night. But he did not come up here and say he's going to do that seven days a week. He said he's going to do that one day and that skip at least a day before he does another day. I think that's a really great compromise. He's also signed up to, to uh, do things by our current noise ordinances. So you know what? You could have a neighbor put a boom box in their backyard. And as long as they're not uh, exceeding that, that ordinance, that noise ordinance, there's nothing you can do about it, all right? So it's no different than, than, than what he is proposing here. Drunken behavior, very serious about this one. I just want to apologize, I'm sorry. No, it wasn't me, all right? Um, I have never seen, nor have I found, a single arrest down at the seawall since I've been here. I walk down there all the time, every, all day at night, I am never concerned about my well-being. I am never concerned that, that someone's going to hurt me or I'm in any harm whatsoever. Are there people having a good time? Yes. But most of the time, I'm taking pictures of people because they're posing on the seawall with, with the moon behind them. 
all right? Uh, it's people having a good time and, and, and having fun, all right? I don't see this. And I, if someone were to relieve themselves on my property, I'd be beyond mad. There's no question about it. But I think, don't think it's happening as much as we're bringing this up or, you know, or anything else. And I'm with you. The person who did that was an absolute buffoon. And we should work with the police department to make sure that does not happen. Again, though, that's nothing that the little pub brought on. I don't see anything on their menu telling you, hey, you know, you should go relieve yourself on your neighbors, on our neighbors' properties. Let's talk a little bit about the positive impact of the little pub in our community. They renovated and created a beautiful hotel. I walk out my door in the morning, I see people out on, on the, the balcony, and they're just having the time of their life, sipping their coffee, looking out at, 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 the, uh, uh, at the shore. And as I said, that place is immaculate. They bring good food to the table at a decent price, all right? They provide beach activities, and they, par they, they participate in charity events. We have a cornhole tournament, all right? Personally, I don't get that game, but hey, you know what? A lot of people do. And they have free cornhole things out there on the beach that people can use. We've got beach yoga out there on Saturday mornings. I know because my wife sits out on the porch with her friend and steals the, uh, the uh, yoga class. They were fantastic during the pandemic. They opened up their place. They turned it into a store. Um, he's reached out to us to not only ask us what we want to do, but then as we complained to him, he still gave us free ice cream. I mean, how, how can you complain with that, with that? And he's supporting local vendors, musicians, yoga on the beach, yappy hour, and he's a pretty creative guy. I think he's going to continue to do wonderful things like this in our community. And I know we all laughed at this before, but I really think that music is important to us here at Lordship. I mentioned Blues on the Beach. I mentioned the New Orleans band that popped up over at, at Market Street. I love to go to Riley's and sit out on his deck and listen to, to, to live music. I like to do that outriggers too, which does the same thing. As I was driving here, I, I would buy Acapulco's, you know, on that, that busy street. I, I know we're concerned about music and we're concerned about safety. They're right there on the street. Music is playing, all right? Uh, I love it. I think it's great. I think what the LIA has done uh, with, with Lordship should be applauded. I think what the Lordship Fathers Association should be applauded. They bring us the uh, music on, on the bluffs. Fantastic time. No one seems to have a problem with this. All right? Music makes people happy. I know I don't seem happy right now. It's because I'm not listening to music, all right? And it really makes and brings us together as a community. And it can be done right, and I believe that little pub will. I want to also talk about doing this consistently across our, our, uh, our community, all right? I don't know who has permits to play music outside or not, but I can tell you, because I frequent a lot of the bars around here and a lot of the, a lot of the restaurants, um, and I see live music at these places, and it's outside, all right? And they're in residential areas, um, and, and they're in, in communities, and they're done well. Love music, love to listen to music while I'm having something to eat and having a little something to drink, um, and I think it can be done, and it can be done responsibly. So just give Little Pub the same opportunity that we seem to be giving all the other places out there that, that are, 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 are putting out live music or pumping music outside, which is against our zoning rules. So fair and consistent. Um, I also think we should look at that from a zoning perspective. I'd like to charge you guys with, uh, guys, oh, I'm sorry, guys and gals with that, all right? Uh, to come up with a better zoning regulation that allows music. Uh, I just think that would be a wonderful thing for us to do here. We should look at other towns for that. So in conclusion, I want to make sure that the board takes into consideration 
um, the opposition to, to Little Pub and what's really happening down there at, at the, at the seawall. I think those are two different things. Um, I want you to consider and take into account the wonderful things that Little Pub has done for our community at the seawall, at Lordship, and at Stratford. And I want you to, to place, uh, uh, I want you to realize that he's willing to put restrictions on this live music and these performances, and I want us to consider being fair and consistent with the way that we're applying our, our zoning laws here in Stratford. Thank you so much for listening. Jean Anus, Jean Enus. Ines, thanks, sorry about that. Hi, Jean Einig, 210 First Avenue, lifelong resident of Stratford. I actually have a question. Pardon? Is that good? Ooh, I guess not. <laughs> Is this okay? I have a question. Um, the, as we said, this is like Stratford's white buffalo. There's no precedent. Um, before, there was a structure on the property. It had a footprint, whatever restaurant it was. It used a percentage of that lot. Is there going to be a percentage of that lot that he is going to be allowed to use as the venue slash entertainment? I mean, is it? going to be 75% of the lot he can use for it, or is it going to be contained to what size the structure was originally on that lot? Anybody? Town attorney? Okay, generally... What's that? Okay, just um, we'll take your uh, note of your question, and then at a later, at, when we get into the debate, we'll have to be able to put together an answer for that, or the applicant in his rebuttal will be able to respond to, to that you. to you. Okay. Okay, uh, again, I'm sorry if I'm, if with the pronunciations, Terry Ralibit. Ralibit, thank you. Hi, my name is Terry Rallabate. I've been a resident of Stratford for 40 years. I've been a resident of Lordship for the last four years. In those 40 years, I've had multiple opportunities to come down to Lordship and enjoy the seawall and pretty much just wandering around Lordship. I won't take up a lot of your time because Mr. Kingston, is it? Basically said a lot of what I wanted to say. I'm totally in support of this, of this proposal because I really do feel that Little Pub has added so much to an area that had gotten, quite frankly, depressed and depressing to look at, all right? Uh, I, I understand that people have concerns, and those concerns are real. But to take those concerns and project them onto one business and one proposal and say that this proposal is going to aggravate all of these concerns beyond control, I think is unreasonable and unfair. I think this commission can certainly help Mr. Grabe come up with a plan, come up with a, a, a model that will work to en enhance his business and yet keep the residents reasonably happy. They're not, not everybody's gonna be totally happy. That, that's just a given. But here in Stratford, we've had a problem with rising taxes, with lack of certain services and everything else, and the burden has been on the homeowners. We need to develop a business-friendly climate, and it can't all be out on Lordship Boulevard. It can't all be in those sections of town where people don't live. There are going to be businesses within and around our neighborhoods. Where I used to live, there was a big hue and cry about an affordable housing unit that was going up. And people were beside themselves with, again, what they considered very real concerns. The unit went up and the concerns disappeared because the commission, 
zoning, planning, everybody else made sure that the concerns of the residents were given, were given an opportunity. They were given an opportunity to express them and they could live with them. So I'm asking you to please remember that Little Pub has been a phenomenal addition, in my opinion, to Lordship. And it's a community that I've, I've grown to love just in the four years I've lived there. And as I said, I have visited it for over 40 years. I really hope that you will work with him to approve his plan. Thank you. Uh, Jim Rallabate. Hi, my name is Jim Rallabate, and I'm the husband of Terry. I've been in Stratford for 40 years. Apropos to Mr. Nelson, I'm also a physician in the medical field, and I've been in Stratford for so many years and down in Lordship for four years, and yet seen one bad accident in Lordship with all the traffic and congestion that we've seen so far, zero. I want to reiterate what my wife said and make it very brief. I don't know all the zoning ordinances, and I don't pretend to be that, but I think we need to give little pub and restaurants like that a chance to let this area grow commercially. It seems like most of the residents that have been here a long, long time are opposed to this, and I have a funny feeling it's because we're changing the nature of their neighborhood. And that's what happens with change. If you want to get businesses into Stratford and you want to be a Stratford-friendly community that allows people to grow with businesses, you have to allow businesses to start. And as long as the Zoning Commission sets up appropriate guidelines and rules and they follow the laws, then I think Little Pub should be given a chance. He's willing to work with you on every single question that you raised to him tonight. He was able to give you an answer, a recommendation, a solution. And I think instead of being so against this whole idea, we need to be working with him. He's even talked to many of the residents in Lordship that were opposed to this idea, and he's given them adequate answers. They may not be happy with it, but when you move to a residential area in a coastal town, Narragansett, Mesquamacut, Newport, Cape Cod, down in Florida, I think you have to assume that over time, commercial properties are gonna go in there for the betterment of the town, and unfortunately, things are gonna change around your neighborhood. That's just the way it is. And I don't know what else to say except that I'm in strong favor of this little pub proposal. Thank you. Will Farmer. Hi, uh, members of the board, Chairman, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't have a lot of prepared statements. Um, oh, you can't hear me? Hello? Is that better? Hi. Um, Will Farmer, 216 Margarita Lawn. Um, I'm currently a candidate for District 1 Town Council. Um, I've been listening to a lot of the comments today, um, hearing a lot of the um, emotional feelings towards a Little Pub expanding and, uh, at the seawall. I also share some of those concerns. A lot of my concerns are about um, changing the way the community looks. Um, I don't have the pleasure of living across the street from the seawall, but I do respect uh, my neighbors who live in that area. Um, I share those same fears about the types of people that may overflow into that uh, part of our community. Um, I also share concerns about crime, trash, parking, and, uh, and noise. I also uh, understand that we have to grow as a community. I am for economic growth and development in Stratford, specifically Lordship, but not at the sacrifice of inconvenience to our neighbors. Um, I've heard the, uh, the discussion today and I've listened to the, uh, the briefing provided by Mr. Gray. And what I hear is a lot of cooperation, um, putting in controls to make sure that we don't have to, um, you know, clean up the mess, per se. I'm all for that. Um, I'm a cybersecurity professional by trade, retired Air Force veteran. 
Uh, we had a saying at the Pentagon, we're not the office of no, we're the office of how. And I think we should keep that in mind, and I think we should hold Mr. Gray accountable. Um, I do believe there's some room for us to grow. I think we should try to find a way to meet in the middle. Um, I don't believe we should look at Mr. Gray as a neighbor. I believe we should look at him as a business. And if we look at him as a business, we can hold him to a higher standard. Um, there's never going to be 100% agreement on this issue. I can respect that. Um, but I do think we do have an opportunity to bring something really beautiful to Lordship. I consider Lordship uh, my little piece of heaven. I've always referred to it as my little piece of heaven. And I feel like this is an opportunity for us to show other people our little piece of heaven within the constraints um, provided through ordinance. Um, I, again, as a, a um, District 1 candidate, this is important to me, and I do want to make sure that um, we meet in the middle somewhere. Thank you. Craig Stout. Hello there. Um, this is my first ever in my life uh, town hall talk. Uh, I lived in Reading for 30 years, and if you want quiet, go to Reading. You can hear a tennis ball half a mile down the road. You can hear them playing. I moved here at the age of 71 because I was looking for some more of a neighborhood environment where there were people that I could get to know, and um, honestly, it's been a fantastic uh, experience. I moved here in November of 2019, so I'm, I'm a newbie. I'm not a 10, 20, 30, 40-year-old uh, member of, of this community. But what I love about it is I can see a 10-year-old boy drive, walk, uh, riding his bike down the street by himself without his parents. It's the way I grew up in Ohio. But I will say that I also moved here because I wanted to have a life where I could exchange not only friendship, but experiences. And I happen to be a music lover myself. Um, I think that, uh, again, I'm not a 40-year-old member here, and I know for those of you that are close to the little pub, it might be difficult to accept the kind of change, but I'm, I'm a proponent of managed, controlled, change. And I think there's an opportunity here. I think the owner of the pub has been uh, reaching out to everyone to get to know them, to share their issues. And from what I understand and the way everything I read and hear, he's doing everything possible to make this a positive experience. Um, I too believe that I liked what he said about um, fun, and I liked what he said about the experience down there. When I first started looking for a house here, it was in probably in the spring of 19, and I'll never forget going to the seawall, and I said to myself, do I really want to be here? This is depressing. The restaurant was dark. The lot across the street was deserted. There were piles of, you know, rocks and stones. It just looked awful. It was terrible. I said, who would want to move here? But I did, and I love it, and I'm happy I did, okay? But I'm just trying to say that, you know, we talk about property values. I would think that today's lordship is infinitely more attractive the way it is now than it was in the spring of 2019, and I'm happy for that. I've eaten at the Little Pub many times during COVID. I was a regular there. They brought food out to my car. I didn't have to go in. My two daughters have stayed at the hotel. They loved it. And I think that they've got a lot to offer. I think they're trying very, very hard to work. And I like the, the thought about the Pentagon, about not being a place to say no, but saying how. And I think we deserve he deserves 
us to consider how we're going to make this work, because I think he's trying very hard, and I support it very much. Thank you. Uh, Eric Roth Rothstein. Good evening. Thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity. I just wanted to, uh, my name's Eric Rothstein. I live at uh, Maple Street here in Lordship. Um, I'm here to register my support for the entertainment permit. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Um, is that better? Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we took so much joy and so much pleasure being able to walk down to whether it was the uh, bluff or down to the seawall to listen to some music. Certainly during COVID, it was a saving grace just to have the opportunity to go down and listen to a little music and relax a little bit and kind of forget about all the craziness. Uh, I have yet to meet anyone here in Lordship that doesn't like music. Um, I haven't met a musician who doesn't like to play music in front of a uh, live, live audience. Um, so w one of the pleasures we have uh, by, by going down there is we know we're spending our money here locally with local businesses, uh, helping our community helping our schools, our police, uh, people who clean the beaches, uh, rather than having to go to uh, different neighborhoods. Uh, we, we, we've just found that this section is just, in the last few years, has just gotten so nice. Uh, all the things that, uh, from Riley's and, and Little Pub and cleaning up that, that eyesore in, in between them was, uh, just changed the area, changed it for the better. And, and I think, uh, uh, what's being proposed for some additional live music or entertainment down there is something uh, that will just make it even nicer. Um, as a business owner, I know, uh, you know, what's involved in making payroll and making sure I provide a safe work environment for my customers and my, my staff. Uh, I, I, I do know that uh, it's probably much more difficult for the food and hospitality industry to continue to draw people in. Uh, obviously, you have to have good food. You have to have a nice environment. I think both the restaurants that we get to enjoy down there offer that. Uh, but they have to do a lot of creative things, whether it's trivia night or karaoke or, uh, you know, live entertainment or ladies' night, something like that. Restaurants to draw in new crowds, continually uh, bring in uh, people to keep keep the old customers coming back and, and generate new customers. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have a little bit of a, uh, I, I gotta come clean here, is my, my son does work down, he's 17 years old, he works as a busboy down at Riley's. Uh, I prefer that obviously, he's got a summer job. They provide a lot of neighbors, a lot of local people I know that work down there, love the, uh, love the area to work in. And uh, I know he's not hanging out somewhere, some, somewhere getting in trouble. He's actually uh, being provided a, a means at, for a summer job. So I, I, I love that that's also available. And I think if with this additional venue, there's going to be a need for more employees, more people to work. Maybe more kids can get summer jobs too. Uh, I'm sure one thing I've heard tonight, and it started to keep it brief, but I, is that everyone seems, most people seem, to be willing to compromise, to come up with a plan that we can all live with, we can all work with. Uh, I know Mr. Grabe for uh, a while has said uh, he's willing to do whatever it takes to make it work. And I, I think that's the attitude. Uh, we should give him a chance. I think we're, uh, we're all gonna benefit from it in the long run. And I, I just wanted to come up here and voice my support for the project, so thank you. Um, Kamal Shaham? Kamal Shaham? He left? Okay. Megan Kimball? Hi, I'm Megan Kimball. I'm on 80 Walnut Street um, in Stratford. So I just. Um, want to voice my opposition to the application for the entertainment permit by Platypus Partners. Um, while the business upgraded, 
provided by Little Pub across the street at the old Marnix location have been a really welcome addition to the community. And you know, I was the first one to be super excited about what you've done um, there. And that I'm really concerned about the addition of an entertainment permit and how that will decrease the quality of life for adjacent neighbors, disrupt traffic and parking, stop resident access to public beaches, and generally allow for an overcrowding of that property. And Mr. Grabe did predict that I was going to speak to some of the events that happened last summer, which I will, but my parents taught me that actions speak louder than words, and so that's what I'm sort of relying on as evidence. Um, so while Mr. Grabe's current proposals have described atmospheric music, the actuality of some of his events that he's hosted have been extremely disruptive. Um, when Tangled Vine did come last summer, people were set up on public beaches, filled the sidewalks, parked well into the neighborhoods, and I just feel that by booking local bands with known large followings like that, it's not really showing a respect for the neighborhood or um, how many people you can fit in those small spaces. And these bands are still being listed on his current website of what he foresees this property to be. So it just doesn't align with what he's saying. Um, so I just feel this property in question is not equipped to hold such events and being in a residential neighborhood, it's hugely disruptive to the surrounding properties. And depending on how the wind is blowing, um, many neighbors on surrounding streets. And as you know, the Waterfront Commission gave this proposal an unfavorable recommendation. So Mr. Graves speaks about being a good neighbor, yet at the previous PNZ meeting, Platypus had failed to provide mailers to the surrounding properties to alert them of their intentions, which to me is troubling. And while I do really appreciate Platypus Partners' insistence on going about getting the proper permits to hold further events and entertainment, I really cannot trust the intentions of a company that has shown a disregard for their neighbors by booking large and loud gatherings. My fear is that if an entertainment permit is granted, we'll see these types of concerts being more and more frequent. And I love seeing live music, but I go to an appropriate location to do that. Um, just a little bit as a background, I really love living in Stratford. I grew up here and I have two young children. I was away for a long time and I moved back here um, from Brooklyn, New York 10 years ago because of the town's richly diverse community and affordable access to a beautiful shoreline. Um, please oppose this application so that our beaches and seawall can be truly enjoyed by all of our residents and visitors, not just those privileged enough to be able to afford expensive drinks and beachfront hotel rooms. Seawall for all, Mr. Graves saying, should refer not to a business trying to make money, but to the reality of what this neighborhood really can provide. And you know, if you ever want to have a conversation about equitable access to beaches, I'm happy to be involved in that. But your votes in opposition to the entertainment permit have the power to serve our whole community. Thank you for your time. I didn't even have to call him. <laughs> Walter P. Room Kunis. Good evening, sir. Playing games, sir. Good evening, Car gentlemen. Nice to see you all back on the ball again. My name, as you said, Walter P. Rim Kunis. I reside at 425 2nd Avenue. I bought that house back in 1954 when I got finished with my two year paid vacation in Korea. I came, I came to Lordship because it was quiet. It was a nice community. I was able to raise my five children. My wife and I, we knew everybody, and everybody knew us at that time, because we were a smaller unit. People knew me because of all the various activities I was involved with. I am here not to talk about the restaurant, little pub. These guys doing good. When I came there, we had four enterprises down at the beach. We had Marnix, which was doing well. We had Skippers. I know you people won't remember that one. We had Pops. If you wanted any liquid stuff, there's Pops there. 
and we had the roller skating rink. And they all did good. Now I see they got problems over there trying to build them condos up where the roller skating rink is. I don't know what that's about. But now to get down to business. I'm here with questions. I'm a little un unknown what's going to happen. First of all, is this property going to be an annex to the restaurant? Or is it a separate enmity unto itself? This, that's question one. If it does, where is the kitchen if it's going to be separate? Has the public health department looked into it? What are they going to serve? And will it be covered under the health department? Number two, in a very thing, sanitation, in other words, sewers, restrooms. He says, I think he said, you've got a couple porta potties. People don't like to go, go out to eat and then go to a porta potty. I know you people <laughs> don't. I know, I know, you, in a hurry, in a rush, you will go to something like that. But are you going to have to go across the street over to the little pubs? Or was there going to be, I know they closed down the uh, deli because they couldn't have nothing on the inside because they didn't have restrooms there. They could eat outside on the sidewalk, but they couldn't eat inside. And they closed it down because they didn't have restrooms. That was the health department. The liquor permit. What type of liquor permit do they have? Do they get uh, something over because of uh, the governor gave them a present for, for a while? Is that going to hang on after the 24? I don't know if I'll be here that long. I'll make me 95, but I don't know. And uh, another one, as you know, I'm, I was always in the environment. I got, I got a question. The DEP, after Sandy, come down and said any structures that are built along the seashore had to be 12 foot above high, mean high tide. The people behind them on Washington Parkway, the, oh, our, when the woman put her property went up 12 feet. Over there at the skating rink, they are going to go up. 12 feet. All these, they got four containers over there now. They're not portable. They don't have wheels on them. So if any kind of like you get another Sandy or Irene or whatever we had, that whole area floods. That's under six foot of water over the seawall. What's going to happen to that? The man says, He's talking about bringing in a couple big bands. And we're only going to have 90 some odd people there on the lot. You know darn well if you've got a name band, they're not just going to stand there on the lot. They're going to be hanging around the seawall. They're going to be over there uh, up and down Washington Parkway. If you know, you know now, if any of you take a ride down there on a Saturday or Sunday or some nights, it's hell to pay to go down Washington Parkway. On that parking on Washington Parkway seems to be, that's part of uh, little, little pubs parking. And their parking lot's full over there in Washington. Parking is gonna be another one. Oh, I talk too much. <laughs> Good to see you again. You know my, I, not too keen on this. Thank you very much. Thanks, Walt. I appreciate that. Uh, Daryl Rathburn.
Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk at today's meeting. Um, I do object to Platypus Partners' uh, petition, Microphone. mostly. Microphone. Thank you. Better? Yeah. Um, I do object to Platypus Partners' petition, specifically for the outdoor entertainment portion. Um, this evening, I'm just going to focus on one word, intent. So intent is the difference between assault or it's just an accident. Um, or in the case of Connecticut laws, uh, liquor laws, that a business can be held liable for damages caused by drunk patrons under certain circumstances. Uh, regardless of intent, there's still a victim. Um, I don't know Mr. Grabe other than him speaking at the waterfront meeting and at this meeting. Um, so I, I will take him at his word um, about his intent. But that word, intent, I heard that a lot at the waterfront meeting. Uh, several times from Mr. Grabe, when asked about cars blocking Washington Parkway when a band was playing, Mr. Grabe said, that was not my intent. I didn't expect so many people to show up. However, nobody was turned, out, turned away, um, and I'm sure the gross profit was far exceeding his intent as well. Uh, he was also asked about the band playing outside until after 10.30, and this is weeks before the June meeting with this zoning commission, where he was going to ask for outdoor entertainment permission. Um, Mr. Grabe said, that was not my intent. I wasn't there, and if I was, I would have stopped it. Um, however, he took no, no uh, responsibility for his manager's inaction, and did not even address why he scheduled a band to play even though he knew that he was asking for permission several weeks later. Um, there were other outdoor entertainment events scheduled that didn't happen due to weather as well. Um, so control intent. How do you control how many people could, could appear at this? Um, I'm sure it is not Mr. Mr. Grabe's intent to have anything get out of control. Uh, it would be bad for his reputation, risk damage to his property, potentially risk harm to his employees. However, he's also a smart businessman and would probably not turn away another patron. He didn't before, or another 200 patrons. Uh, it adds to the profits. It adds to the fun for the patrons. Uh, but none of us want a repeat of what happened at, at Harborside Bar in Stratford on September 22nd, 2007, um, for those of you who, who are not aware, uh, it took the combined efforts of the Stratford, Milford, and State Police to provide crowd control of 1,000 patrons at 2 a.m. Two officers were sent to the emergency room for that. I'm sure that was not the intent of the Harborside bar owners either, but the profits rolled in. A building provides boundaries. It provides a limited number of people due to the occupancy rate. It provides walls that, that shelter the sound in that area. And it provides control. That it, it, an, out, so out, uh, an outside entertainment event, it can very easily get out of control. There's no way to limit the number of patrons. Uh, no walls, no maximum building occupancy. Um, the only thing that that lot has is a rope that high off the ground. Um, tripping height, but I, I'm sure that can be changed as well. Um, there's a potential for virtually unlimited number of people to go down there. The only thing is, is limited by the amount of parking, uh, which many people have already brought up. But I, I know that Little Pub advertises as far away as New York City boroughs, and if you drive a half, a, a, an hour from there, or even a half an hour, are you going to let parking two blocks away bother you, or ten blocks? No, you're going to park there. You may even park illegally, because, hey, a risk of a $25 fine is a heck of a lot cheaper than paying a, a cover charge at other places and you're not gonna turn around and go back for another half hour. Um, 
Mr. Grabe also stated that whatever happens outside his property is not his responsibility. Um, if so, how much of the town's resources are going to be required every time there is an event there? I'm not talking about the little events, like if somebody speaks Shakespeare or there. I don't think there would be a, a crowd control issue. But whenever there is a band there, especially a popular band, how many policemen would be required to keep everything under control? To keep alcohol out of the streets, to keep people out of the streets, for parking, for alcohol consumption where alcohol consumption is not allowed at the seawall, in the streets, in the parking lots. Um, number of patrons intent. In the petition, I could not find anything that said the limit of the number of patrons. I don't think there is a limit. I think it's however many people show up. Uh, there was a reference to the 24 tables. That's already been discussed. Uh, 96 people. I, really, there's going to be people standing there. There's going to be people, it, when that area fills up, the only boundary is that little rope. People are going to be standing outside there. They're going to be standing in the streets, in the parking lot, at the seawall. It's going to be a madhouse. Um, parking intent. Uh, that 29 parking spaces, I commend Mr. Grabe for that. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> um, but that is already filled up. Um, I took a picture. I'll, I'll provide this to you. But... Um, that lot was full Saturday night at 7.30, um, and I think Mr. Grabe actually mentioned that too, that on, on Friday nights, Saturday nights, weekends, it, it tends to fill up. So that is not for an event. That's when there's no event. So it really does not add to the parking for an event. Um, Mr. Driscoll already mentioned the uh, Town of Stratford zoning regulations, and uh, I, my number actually was 96, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, 96 parking spaces needed. I think you had 94. Um, and all of that doesn't even include all the people standing in the streets and the parking lots at the seawall who are outside of that area, because it can spill out uh, for hundreds of feet, uh, probably blocks. Um, and I'd like to remind you again that that Harborside Bar incident had a thousand people. What would a thousand people and let's say 250 to 500 cars look like in Lordship? Um, operating time limit. Um, I also think there needs to be adjustments for that. Uh, the the uh, pre-approved ban played to 10:30. I'm sure that will. Uh, I'm sure we will have police making sure that that stops. Um, but also, the town of Stratford noise ordinance ends at 8 p.m. on Fridays, not 10 p.m. Um, so that would seriously curtail that as well. Um, in conclusion. Results can be far different from intent. Intent can change over time. Intent could change if Little Pub decides to sell that to somebody else. We must rely on regulations and permits and the town resources that are needed to continually enforce them. There is no way to control or limit the number of attendees. Parking will spread out for many blocks for a popular band. Unlike a building that provides a limited environment, an, an outdoor entertainment does not, no limit. Any well-attended event will eliminate parking spaces from those who want to peacefully enjoy the many marine uses of the seawall. It doesn't add to it, it displaces it. And late evening noise, safety, and problems with drunk patrons will be a recurring problem for the surrounding neighborhood and a burden for the town of Stratford resources and businesses, and finances, sorry. Thank you very much, I appreciate the, the opportunity. Next is Sarah Varilla.
Hello, again. Thank you for letting me speak again. I said thank you for letting me speak again. I was with the mayor and I believe he was the chief of police when we talked at the Triangle Park in Lordship at the beginning of June. I was here at this meeting with you guys a month ago. I was here about 15, 16 days ago. At the other meeting we had here, I've spoken at all of them, so I figured what, what the hell. Um, honestly, I, I can't remember what I told the last people or the, you guys the time before that. I have comments in the post, apparently. I'm not sure. I don't want to reiterate myself. Um, I think the first time I stood up here in front of you guys, I forgot to tell you that I grew up in Lordship, lifelong resident of Lordship. And I've just bought back into Lordship for my family of four, four, and a five-year-old. And we hope it's going to be everything it can possibly be. The only thing I'm worried about is what I've told you guys before, the lack of policing and the bumper cars of these drunks driving out of Lordship. If anyone wants to take a ride down the Burma Road, middle of the day, check out how many wildlife are hit and how many of those metal pilings are now crushed in just in the last month. Um, I've, I've taken note of it coming into Lordship and going out of Lordship, as well as, as liquor store bags of nips, not only being thrown down Washington Parkway as people hold their red cups already drunk walking down to the existing bar that's there, but coming in and out. They're, on, they're getting drunk on their way in, so guess how drunk they're going to be on their way out. I didn't hear him mention security, private security for his establishment at any of these meetings, that bothers me. Because it's not just the town that has to worry about policing, where there is a huge lack of it in this beautiful, pristine area. But what is it that he's going to provide security for on site for these people that are there eating or drinking, taking their drinks to go across to the seawall? I agree with someone who spoke about being able to push their elderly grandma at 80 down the seawall with having navigate somebody with their cocktail falling over or any of that. I, I hope to be able to take my children down there without hearing cat calls from somebody that had a little too many at 3 p.m. on a Sunday. Asking for seven days a week, that's a broad spectrum. Uh, I, I just don't like the takeover. It's going to be a sweeping motion and it's going to be a lot of change. And the people that are here not discounting anybody that lives in Lordship, because you all might have seen a little bit of what I got to see growing up and now what I see living there. But it's, <sighs> people go places to enjoy these things. Like I told you a month ago, I know I said this, then they get to go home. These are these people's home. Everybody that's here, this was full last time and the time before. Now this side, I'm not going to talk ill about anybody. But I'm just saying, nobody had to ask these people to come. They came because they've seen it, they've witnessed it. Nobody's scared of nothing, all right? But what the problem is, is that it shouldn't take a hazardous incident to open anyone's eyes to what you guys already can see coming. And I'm sorry, but I've already seen a couple missteps that don't really let me trust the words coming out of his mouth that he's telling you. Maybe he's a great guy, but this is not his Venice Beach. This is not his cash cow. This is a residential waterfront neighborhood. Maybe people bought into it recently because they're retired and they want to enjoy it, but they also want entertainment. I'm sorry, the people that have lived here for 50, 60, 70 years have their whole family here. They're not worried about y'all's entertainment. You know, they still want to come home and live. They still got to put those kids to bed at 8 to wake up at 6. They got to do what they got to do. And that's why they're all here, because they care. I said that last time, too. I just don't, I don't want to see it overrun and out of control. Because right now, just letting people, the fact that he's taking advantage of letting people walk off his property with drinks. That's going to be everywhere except on his two properties. I think there's enough of that in the little pub already, and I think there's really kind of going to be no 
control of that at what he wants to do, where he wants to do it. And I'm, I'm concerned about the people I've known for 40 years there. I grew up with and their kids that grew back you know, into the neighborhood. It's, I don't want to read my words in the paper saying, Lure, Lurchip's a bottleneck. Let's please do something about it before somebody drives into somebody's living room. Because that's what the paper quoted me saying. It's true. It's true. Some unsuspecting schmo that lives there, that loves it there, <coughs> is somebody's going to get hurt if there's no regulations put in place, if there's no security put in place, and there's no boundaries put in place. From Little Pub to Russian Beach shouldn't be a free-for-all drinking haven. It, there's got to be something. And keep getting the cover of the governor's order. Keep getting that. One day it's not going to be there. And it's going to be mayhem down there. I'm just asking you guys to please think of what everybody else said. The people that actually live there, invested there. Taxes ain't cheap, people. They suck. And it's for a reason that people chose to be in that neighborhood. And they've sacrificed stuff. I'm going to sacrifice that to be back down there. I don't want to see somebody run over one of my fucking kids. Excuse me, excuse my language. One of my kids. Because we walk up and down Washington Parkway because that's where I grew up. I went to school with Erica Kent. Beautiful family. Loved the skating rink. It's a great place, but it's, it's not his private boardwalk to exploit. It's just not. Please keep it a community and put rules in place if you do give him some lead, because once he has it, he'll take it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So just uh, some housekeeping. We're coming up uh, 10 o'clock. We have five more names on there, and then, of course, we'll take anybody else uh, that wants to speak, and then the applicant will have a chance to rebut. So, and we have two more petitions to hear tonight. So just if you can focus your remarks, um, we'd all really appreciate it so that the commission can get through its business. Uh, Doreen Berthnelli. My name is Doreen Badamelli. I am a property owner at 147149 Park Street. I sent a letter in to certain commissioners. Uh, I don't know if it was distributed to everybody here, but I won't go through my entire letter, which basically talked about Marnix as I saw growing up in Stratford 30 years ago. I'm older than that, just you know. Um, and the way it changed and the way it slid downhill and then when Little Pub came in how they regenerated not only the restaurant but the hotel and the whole area. So I felt the need to write the letter after I read the article in the Connecticut Post which was just I think totally one-sided and I just thought it was disrespectful the way it was written. So now I came to the meeting tonight and I've been listening to the neighbors and I understand their point. Um, I have a couple, I'm in a unique situation where I understand it on both levels. Um, but a couple things I want to talk about that were mentioned. One, the zoning issues. Now, I didn't see any of the, the, uh, the issues that were addressed. But a lot of the zoning issues probably pertain to new builds. So when you're looking at your zoning issues, look at them knowing that it usually pertains to new builds. This is an existing commercially zoned space. It's, oh, it has always been a restaurant and a hotel. He's doing, they have the same thing going on there. All they're doing is expanding their operation to the lot across the street, which I believe was also a restaurant. So when you look at zoning, keep that in mind. Um, there was a comment made about wind carrying noise. Wind does not carry noise. Noise is only carried uh, when it has a, a material thing to carry it, whether it's reverberating off of glass or copper or whatever. Wind does not carry noise, so it does not matter what the wind direction is. Um, denying entertainment. I understand that's a part of the application. And actually, they're doing the right thing by applying for, an enter for the, the zoning entertainment, et cetera. There's 
I don't know that I've been in a bar or restaurant in Stratford that doesn't have entertainment. And I'm hearing there's only one entertainment permit issued. So how is everybody else doing it? They are doing the right thing by asking for the application. So to deny him based on all this craziness of, of thousand people brawls and everything else, I've been to other little pubs. I've heard the entertainment they have. They have acoustic guitars. They have a couple people. I don't know what the being was that happened whenever it happened a couple weeks ago or whatever it was. Maybe that was a live and learn situation. Maybe they had a band that they didn't realize were going to draw as many people. And I'm sure, knowing the, my guess of how much money that they have invested in that property and building out that property, they're not going to put themselves in a position where they're going to have some crazy band where they're going to have an all out brawl. And then the neighbors are going to hate them and their life is going to be more difficult. From what I've seen, They've done everything they can to reach out to the neighbors, to make the property beautiful. It's a beautiful property now. I saw the, hotel, the pictures of the hotel online. It's a top-notch hotel. Before, my guess is it was used for prostitution. It, it was a mess. So um, I'm also wondering why nobody here who's complained about the possibility of noise, the, nobody's complained about the music that's playing at Riley's. I mean, I've heard music at Riley's before, and nobody's complained about that. So Excuse why me, ma'am. Can we just have some respect for the speaker? We'd like to hear her remarks. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you. So nobody complained about the, the music at Riley's. Maybe theirs is going to be the same type of music. So I'm just wondering why everybody's up in arms about music down there. Um, now, it, my personal experience. I know a lot of mention was made about the people coming down there and it was jam-packed. I have a beach property in Milford. I live adjacent to, we have a Milford pocket beaches. So if you come down the street, if this is the street, there's the pocket beach, okay? And it's for the people that live on the street. My house is here. When I bought that house, I said to myself, I have two things going on here. I have everybody that lives on the street as my neighbor. But I also have the added view of not having another house up against me. When these residents bought their houses, and I appreciate their concerns, they knew there were restaurants there. They knew the venues that were there. They have bars, there's restaurants, there's a hotel. They knew what they were buying the same way I knew what I was buying. And do I have to bite my tongue a lot? Certainly. The beach hours are supposed to be from... 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Are there days that some people are out there till 2, 3 in the morning and talking too loud? Yes, but I knew what I bought. And you know what? Sometimes you have to respect that people are enjoying themselves and give them that, that bit. It, it, it's not going to be all the time. There might be a hiccup here and there, but it, it's just common courtesy to try to just live and let live, as they say. My other experiences... My first house was on Park Street. I still own it. I have a two-family on Park Street, and I love it. Stratford is a wonderful town. I lived right up the street from the gazebo, where bands would come and play. Can I hear them at my house? Yeah. Were people parking all the way up my street and turning on my driveway? Yeah. But you know what? It was enjoyable for the people in the area. I would not deny them that. So to, to make... And I, again, I understand your issues. I do. I live on a beach. I, they have parties on the beach. There has to be a time where you have to try to come to an agreement. And I think that Mr. Grabe has, has said he's willing to make concessions. He's willing to limit the times. I'm sure he's not going to want bands that are going to be attracting thousands of people that are going to cause fights. The other thing I would like to, to, to bring up is I heard Mr. Grave talk about these, these runs and these jogs and these dog adoption and all these nonprofit things. I mean, it sounds to me like they're doing a great job for the community. I mean, they're, they're really philanthropic and I think that they would continue that. So you could sit here and you could say, I don't want this and I don't want that. 
But then think of the alternatives. You have somebody who has brought that property up to a beautiful standard and is contributing to the, the local people, the nonprofits, everything else. I think you should give him a chance. His, his intentions seem sincere, and that's what I have to say. So thank you for your time. Ryan Mahoney. Ryan Mahoney, okay. Good evening and thank you. Um, I'm a newbie, so bear with me. Uh, I do want to say very quickly, I'm impressed. To everybody out here and to you all, the nation, I think, could learn a little bit about how we're conducting ourselves here, seriously, very well. Uh, I'm here in support of what he's trying to do. You know, I, I've lived in Stratford, by the way, 45 Rowland Street. Uh, I'm going to breathe for a second. Uh, 45 Rowland Street, Stratford. Lived in Stratford for 19 years. Spent a lot of time down at Marnix. Anybody that's gone to Marnix on Sundays, you know, I was probably one of the families that tried to beat you there at church time. Uh, loved it. But I'm very happy at what he's been able to do and what he's been able to do at, at redeveloping that area. Same with you, Rich, over at Riley's. Same thing. There was a, a previous spot there that needed some tuning up. That whole area looks a lot better and is working a lot better. He's done a lot of stuff in Old Saybrook, in Wilton, in Fairfield, in Greenwich. That's a Tiffany list of Connecticut towns. And Stratford's on that list. And that's what we want. Businesses out there to see. Homeowners out there to see. Parents with their families to see. And so far, the, I don't know what number you gave, 677 days, 766 days, whatever number it is, he's got a pretty good track record so far, and he's trying to figure out how to make this work. And I ask that you guys try and figure out a way to help him make it work and have a second spot in town that's a benefit to the community. All right? That's all I got. Thanks. Mary Cotter. First of all, thank you all so much for sitting here in the middle of all this fanny fatigue and, and hearing us all out. <laughs> this, is, this is so kind of you, especially when you say you have two hearings after this. Can everybody hear? Hello, hello. Um, I'm not going to reiterate the things I would normally have said because other people have said them better than I can, and that'll help keep it shorter. I do want to make a, a few comments on things that have been said by other people. Um, first of all, I, like many people, am a music lover. I don't think that is the issue. Um, the issue is uh, where the music is played, what it attracts, and for how long it goes on. Bands on the Bluffs is great. Once a month, announced in advance, parking along the residential street. If that were every single night, we probably wouldn't be seeing Bands on the Bluffs anymore. Um, so that's a comment about parking. And then what worries me, I love what Little Pub has done like everybody else does. The issue is not Little Pub. We all like Little Pub. You've done a great job with Little Pub. And my relatives are coming to visit this month, and they're going to be staying there at my invitation. So Little Pub is not the issue. The issue is the lot across the street from Little Pub. Plenty of people have addressed that. What worries me about what Mr. Grabe is requesting is the limitlessness of it. He's putting out a request for seven days a week, but saying, but I won't really do it seven days a week. I'll only do it every other day and up to this time. But once a permit is granted, the permit is for seven days a week. That scares me, because you can change it at any point you want to change it. And I really like what the former speaker said, said about intent. I just love it. Again, the looseness of Mr. Grabe in saying, um, if it doesn't work, we'll make it work. You get a permit not according to what you intend to do if something doesn't work. You get a permit according to what you plan that will work. Waterfront business 
waterfront businesses are supposed to be are supposed to have water dependent uses. That's another thing that concerns me because I didn't hear anybody, I didn't hear Mr. Grabe or anybody else address the fact that this lot will not be used for water dependent uses. Um, and then somebody said, it always looks great, there's never any trash. I just want to give credit again to Linda, the nurse who comes every other day and cleans Lordship before the man came out uh, for his walk in the morning who sees no trash. It's probably because of Linda. Let's give her a little credit for that. So, <laughs> so, yeah. and, and then finally, I want to say something to defend myself because my, me being quoted in the paper by, with things that I didn't say is just, I know it's journalistic license. I have no problem with anybody drinking or smoking weed, nor did I say that I did. What I object to is people out at midnight or one in the morning parked at the seawall, drunk and smoking weed. That's when I walk my dog and I come down there to smell the fresh air and there isn't any. So that's all I have to say. Okay, Joseph Satin. First of all, thank you very, very much. Uh, before I start, I'd like to share something with all of you uh, that I haven't heard shared before. Uh, when people talk to me, there seems to be a difference in their minds between music and bands. And Mr. Grabe, sound engineer, I'm an engineer, there are several other engineers in here and we all go data happy. But I just want to let you know what we're talking about when we talk about sound. And I'm going to step away from the microphone. The town regulation call out 45 decibels of sound after 8 o'clock, 55 before. This is 45, that's 50. This is 45 decibels. This is the sound level that the town sets after 8 o'clock. This is 55 decibels. This is the sound level that the town sets. Uh, after uh, before I how are we talking about I understand we're talking about music but how are we talking about large bands when this is the level of the music that can be heard one foot from the property I don't know I don't understand it maybe the rules are going to change but for now these are the rules Uh, regarding the petition, there have been many statements made before the town committees and the town commissions over the past several months. With so many people involved and concerned with the town statutes affecting this petition, with the governor's COVID statutes affecting this petition, with the assets of the town, the police department, personnel, poised to be stressed, I felt that it was time for what has become a two-sided situation to, be, to begin to discuss things with one another in order to come up with a common ground. Last week, I contacted a group of residents in Lordship who have opposed the position, and I contacted Mr. Grabe as well. And I asked if we could meet and see if we could agree and come up with something that was acceptable to all of us. After the meeting, I was going to email the 100 residents that I keep in constant contact with and present the results of their comments to what the five or six of us had discussed. These hopefully, excuse me, we were to meet two days ago. Later in the week, the meeting fell apart. The group from town decided they didn't want to meet. I went to Mr. Grabe. I apologized. We talked together as we often do. However, obviously, there's still opportunity for items to be discussed and possibly agreed upon. 
with the two sides so far apart, sometimes feels to me like Congress, and with some of the presented plans presently moot because of the existing town and state statutes that affect the petition, and because of the lack of perhaps due diligence by some of the items to be affected, I began to feel that the acceptance of the proposal tonight, although it might be valid, might be premature. As it stands, presently the site in question has been rezoned to waterfront commercial. Presently, Little Pub remains in steady business on Washington Parkway, which I think is amazing that you can keep five businesses running through COVID, I really do. Presently, Governor Lamont's item 7MM states that there can be no entertainment on a piece of property that previously did not have entertainment. Presently, a town statutes prohibit outdoor music by restaurants in Stratford. Presently, as I said, the town statutes limits noise greatly. As of the past weekend, the entire parking area on the Washington and Beach Avenue site, as was mentioned, was fully filled on both Friday and Saturday nights. I spoke with Mr. Grave about this, and he was correct. We have no idea who was parking there. We do know that the lot was filled. We do know that the seawall was filled. We do know that Lower First Avenue was filled. We do know that uh, Lower Washington was filled, and we do know that there was no commercial activity at Platypus site going on. As of two weeks ago, after speaking with the, the Zoning Commission office, there had been no requirements by the Zoning Committee, I guess as a standard, to have Platypus Partners provide a traffic and parking study for this area. As of, the, as of this morning, after speaking with the Zoning Commission office, and I have to put this in quotations because this is what was said, it was believed that no request for a traffic and parking study had been requested by any Stratford committee or commission. As of now, we know that if this, permission is, this petition is approved tonight without residents agreeing to sit down and converse with the applicant and without due diligence with regard to increased traffic and parking requirements that will occur, the police department of Stratford will in the future be tasked with requirements to control and enforce increased traffic and parking enforce the Stratford Sound Ordinance with regard to mark monitoring levels, control and enforce increased pedestrian traffic in the seawall area, control and enforce alcohol use on the town walkways and streets, control and enforce alcohol use on the town parkland and beaches. Really, it's time to sit down and discuss and analyze. Thank you. Mary Ann Cox. Mary Ann Cox. Okay. So that's the last name that was on the list. So uh, is there anybody else that wishes to speak? On the, I saw a name in the back, woman in the back. Come forward. And again, folks, just a reminder, please make your remarks concise as possible. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Christine Doolin, 103 Lordship Road. Um, I have a map here, and I, I don't believe that Little Pub owns the beach in front of their restaurant, according to the map that's on the Town of Stratford website. And I'm just concerned about the entertainment venue uh, as far as kayaks and paddle boards. If they're already using them, are they launching them from in front of their place? And why are they allowed when we are not allowed to do this at Long Beach or Short Beach? And if you allow it for here, then it should be allowed at 
all of the beaches. That's all I have to say and ask. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on the petition? Gentlemen? Hi, my name is Bob Ruthier. I live at 280 Stratford Road uh, at the corner. That's the corner of First Avenue. Uh, I'd like to say just a few things. I don't have a prepared speech, but I do have a, I've been there for 35 years and I know the area and I, I, people have moved here saying, well, this area was ugly. It was, this. no, I love this area. This area was always beautiful. But one of the points I want to make is for all the supporters of Mr. Gray, I, I, I agree with you. He runs a good business. He runs a very good business. He's very fortunate. He has six of them. He runs great businesses. He knows what he has to do to make his businesses run. It's money. That's what it's about. Community relations makes money. All right? I have no problem with Mr. Gray making money. I applaud him. That's why he's there. But not on my back. Not on the backs of the people who live here. When people say, well, you should have known what you had, what you were buying when you moved in, the people did know what they were buying. It wasn't there before, okay? What he wants to do was not even proposed, all right? Now they're looking at something that they didn't count on, but it's, 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 there's a chance that it could happen, much to the degradement of the, of the neighborhood. And, and I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. I lived there, I watched the cars circle round and round on Stratford Road, waiting to get their chance of getting a parking spot. They go over and over, up First Avenue, up Jefferson, up all the streets, they just go round and round, waiting to get their parking spot, all right? I've traveled to there. One of the pleasures of my life was, every time I came home, I'd drive right past my house, on the corner, go right to the seawall, drive around. Think of the past. Can't do it, not anymore. You got people coming out of the out of the out of the restaurant. They've been drinking, which is fine. It's, it's, it's a restaurant, you know. Is but what's being proposed is not in the spirit of having a a, a, a a valued neighbor of a restaurant in the neighborhood. That's not what we're looking at. As Mr. Gray said to me when he said, why do you think I bought that lot? I bought it to make money. Excellent. You can make money, just not on the backs of your neighbors. He, he keeps on saying that it, it's, it's, it's uh, very important to be friends with your neighbors. And I agree with you. Well, you're not doing it, all right? Some of the people that spoke, they said, whoa, I live right in the area. Uh, it doesn't bother me a bit, the people. Well, one person lives on the other side of the locked gate on Shoreline Road. It's locked. Nobody's going to go there. It's locked. All right? Other people, other people say, well, they're not going to come in my area. You don't know that. It's going to happen. Without a doubt, it's going to happen. I used to ride a, I used to ride a motorcycle. We used to go to Vermont for breakfast, all right? It was a nice time. I'm not trying to deprive anybody of coming to a nice, beautiful area and having a good time and enjoying themselves. But having drinking on a bare lot in the sun, almost unsupervised, at least in his bar, I'm sure he's not gonna lose his liquor license because he doesn't want, he doesn't want to lose his liquor license and, and over-serve people. So he's going to tell his bartenders not to overserve. How can you possibly keep that contract with, 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 with your neighbors and with the state and supervise the drinking that's going on in an open lot on picnic tables surrounded by people and you don't know where the heck that liquor is going or how much? It's, it's not conducive to the type of living that anybody in that neighborhood or that part of town went in for. 
I, 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 I applaud your, the people who support you are right in supporting you. You're a good businessman. You cleaned up that motel. I know what that was. Like. Excuse me, sir. Can you just direct your comments oh, I'm sorry. to the commission? I, I, Thank you. I, I know what he did. Mm -hmm. He cleaned up that motel. Okay, it was a, it was needed to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. He made a valuable contribution to the to the to the neighborhood, mm -hmm. giving that to making that restaurant. He brought in business. He brought brought in and, and, and people and they enjoyed themselves. But you know, another thing too, everybody is worried about how he's going to conduct his how he's going to run his business. Well, part of the zoning prop, uh, job, in my thoughts anyway. Doing what's right for the people, doing right, doing right for the town, and 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 for what and good for business. He's great for business. I love the guy. I mean, I love I love his businesses. They're great, but the town does not value the town does not benefit at all. Sir, I'm sorry. You talk to the us. town the town does not benefit from this 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 fiasco that's being that's being brought up here. He will not pay any more taxes than he does now. He doesn't bring in any, any, any value to other businesses in the area. All it is is detrimental to the area. I mean, it, it's just, it doesn't make sense for a small area like that, it, in my opinion. I mean, I, my son got married on the bluffs. The police were there at 9.30 letting us know that we had to shut down the music and, and make sure it's done by 10. We're all, we're all neighbors here. I mean, the neighbors were complete. Can you spell your last name for me, please? I don't know if I should. <laughs> <laughs> R-O-U-T-H-I-E-R. T-H-I-E-R, okay. Like I said, I'm not, I didn't come up here with a prepared speech. Uh, I listened to a lot of things. I, I in no way want to besmudge this gentleman he, he's running a good business, but it's not what we need. It's not what we want. We're not, we're, not, we're not degrading the business that he already has. He's making a good living, and I applaud him for that. That's what we want. But enough is enough. That's my opinion. I'm, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other people want to speak? Anybody else? Okay, woman in the back first, and then the gentleman here. Hi, um, my name is Karen Coaches, and I live 194 Lordship Road. Um, the, I don't have a problem that we're down in Lordship and it's a beautiful community, and having a couple restaurants, um, I'm glad that both of them are doing very well. Um, but one huge concern that I see on the streets, on my street, let alone all you know down at the seawall, is the volume of traffic that has come into Lordship. And you can sit around on our front porches on a Friday night, Saturday night, and speeding up and down Stratford Road. I try to cross the road just to go home from friends' houses, and you've got to watch out for traffic. And I'm very concerned, like some of the other people medically were sort of like, well, there's been no tragic accident. Are we waiting for one to happen? And then how are we going to feel? Um, you know, we have looked into in the past getting more police in the area just in general to keep crime down and things like that. I mean, we've got a beautiful community. Um, and we need more police all over the place, not just even at the seawall, um, because it's going on up and down all of our streets. Um, and we want to be safe. The kids are out riding their bikes. We're all out walking and older people, young people, and we just all want to be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good
Good evening. Uh, I just want to emphasize the fact that uh, the safety. Your, just your name and address, sir, oh, please. Bob Whalen. I lived at first in Ocean Avenue. And uh, everything has already been said. It's all I'm going to do is add a safety factor. I mean, the point of the, the guardrails going on Burma Road, that's kind of an indication, you know, that the birds are dying and uh, there's a lot of things that are happening out there. But going back to uh, uh, the safety aspect, one thing that's happened in the past year is that there's probably been well over 60 new families that have come in, into Lordship and they all have young children, uh, dogs, and they like to go out biking, and they like to walk their dogs at all hours of the day and night. And I've seen in my own little property area um, three instances in the past month where people are just, even at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they're not paying attention as they're driving. There's more cars on the side of the road, there's little kids riding their bikes, and the, and the bicyclists, especially the little kids, they don't seem to be paying attention as much. And likewise, now we have drivers that are likewise somewhat impaired. Maybe they're on pot, maybe they just had a few drinks, but now it's going to be a combination of both. And the new laws have passed, and I guess that lot 25 feet from their front door means that at those picnic tables, they can just as well drink beer and smoke a little pot if they want to. Because the law says if you pass 25 feet, that it's okay. Now that's been going on at the seawall all these years. And fortunately, we haven't had any incidents, but now there's more and more people that are going to be doing this as a result of having this lot and 100 more people in their cars coming down to enjoy themselves, have fun. It's good, but unfortunately, they're going to be impaired, and they're going to make our streets more and more unsafe. That's it. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else wish to speak on the petition? Anybody else wish to speak? Here. Okay. Okay. Just name and address, sir. My name is uh, Anthony Mingalello at 216 First Ave, and as a gentleman just mentioned, I am uh, one of these 60 or some odd new families in the neighborhood. Um, me and my wife came from a city in Connecticut, Stanford, and we wanted someplace quiet to settle down and basically start our family, which we hope to do soon. And the thing that also attracted us to the neighborhood was ironically this gentleman's little pub and the rehabbing of the area, so to speak. And my family's been from Stratford for 50 years. My grandmother's 95 years old and still lives in the town. And pays crazy taxes, just like we all do, I think, here. And I think to do nothing in that area would be worse than tr not working with this gentleman on some sort of reasonable solution. Because I do share some concerns about driver speeding. That is definitely one of my pet peeves, if, if you ask my wife. And people being drunk at all hours of the day, that would quite obviously bother me a lot. But I think there has to be something done with that area in general. And I think he's come forward with a proposal which can be worked on and something reasonable can be done to hopefully enhance the area and make it better and more attractive because the town needs to obviously continue to attract businesses and pushing him out will just send a, a poor signal I think to everyone so that's it thank you sir <laughs> anybody else wish to speak anybody else hearing none you have the right to rebuttal sir you can wrap up, wrap up. and answer any questions that were raised and end it up I will try to be uh, brief. Um, there's a lot to unpack there, um, all over, all over, lots of different topics. Um, it's, I understand the fear, and um, I've tried to put forth a, uh, a proposal that says, let's work on this and let's put fences around it so that everybody can feel you know, good about what we're trying to do here. Um, traffic is traffic. Like I was driving up Washington um, Parkway the other day, probably 11:30 in the morning, and some older gentleman just blew the stop sign in front of me. Right? I mean, so he wasn't drinking; he was just, you know, inconsiderate. And then he got to the intersection where you take a left to go to the beach, and he blew through that stop sign too. And you know what? Maybe he's the guy that's crashing into the guardrails. I don't know. There's just bad drivers out there. It's not all alcohol or traffic related. It's just bad driving. So 
you, you can take bad drivers and then extrapolate that it's somehow due to, um, you know, uh, you know, visiting a local restaurant, but it's just, it's just people. And, you know, um, that's, that's just a fact of life. Wherever you go, they're texting. They don't necessarily have to be drinking. They're doing stupid stuff while they're driving. So I can say Little Pub is against stupid driving. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that with you. Um, you know, Dave Driscoll and Megan, and I forget the gentleman's name, they were talking about, you know, live music and intent. And I talked earlier about their, people want to talk, but they're not listening to what I said. You know, um, one of the comments was the bar would be open till 1 a.m. No, I said the hours of operation are 12 to 9 p.m. And I'm willing to stipulate that any way that we have to stipulate that. And I remember a comment from the earlier meeting that, that said, um, we have, was it Harbor, Harbor View? Who was, who was, Harborside. You know, we, you know, it's hard to be ambiguous because of Harborside. And um, it's not you because you're a nice guy and thank you very much, but it's what if you sell the lot? I don't know how to figure it out so that if I ever sell the lot, it goes away, right? Or I don't know how to fence it in in such a way that um, makes it a permanent sort of thing because it doesn't exist. But I'm willing to try. I'm, I'm willing to be the party of how, not the party of no. I am the party of how. So let's figure out a way to make this work for everybody. It, some people are never going to agree with it. And I, I, I understand their fears, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm trying to figure out a way to, to work um, with everybody so that we can figure it out. Um, gentleman gave a decibel, a decibel reading, you know, uh, demonstration there. That's the rules. That's the rules. I tell you what, that's going to preclude any loud rock band down there. You know what I mean? So there you go. If, if that's what the rules are, that's what the rules are. You know what? There's not going to be 2000 people down there coming to see a band because you know what? If a band's that popular, we just wouldn't have them there. Um, people brought up uh, brought up uh, images of, of bands booked for for this summer. You had to book them in advance. You know what I mean? Those activities are not going to happen. Hey, because they don't have a permit. And B, you know, we just I mean, they're not on our website. They're on the band's website. So, you know, they should just go take them down. But we have to we you know they booked a bunch of bands in advance, thinking that we had a entertainment permit. And once we learned we didn't have an entertainment permit, we stopped. We stopped. You know, the band that played till 10:30. Look, I can give you reasons for all these things. And I'm not being irresponsible. I owned them all. I said, look, here's what happened. That band was supposed to start 5 to 8. It was raining out. They should have canceled it. They went on at 7.30. They wanted to play their three hours. They played till 10.30. Absolutely stupid, right? I wasn't there, though. So I'm, I'm not absolving myself of responsibility. I'm saying I just had bad managers, you know, that, that should have known better. Shouldn't have happened. Um, so... I've been down there now every time there's been anything going on. I go to the Cornell tournament. I'm down. Come on down. It's fun. You know who's down there? It's neighborhood people walking down, taking me for $75 in gift cards because they win the, win, win, the, uh, win the tournament. You know, they come down. They're with their wives. There's some kids. You know, I'll plant the victory flag on people out there having a good time. I don't want to. My victory flag is not, a, you know, 200 people down there causing a ruckus. That's, that's a nightmare for everybody. It's a nightmare for us. So that is not what I'm proposing here. You want to talk about intent? I'll tell you the intent. The intent is to have a nice outdoor venue where people can go have a good time, right? And the definition of a good time is one that doesn't, you know, doesn't intrude on anyone else's, you know, enjoyment of their quality of life. So let's fence it in, right? How can we do that? I've put a proposal forth saying, look, I, I can live with this, you know, but um, if you can't live with it, let's figure out what everybody can live with. One last question was on the size of the building lot. Um, a woman asked, how big of a building could I build if I built a permanent building? And another gentleman mentioned that due to uh, FEMA regulations, if I built a permanent structure there, I'd have to be 14 feet in the air. So to me, the least impact on the neighbor's views are those shipping containers, which are 10 feet high. You know, those are, they don't require any sort of raising. If it floods, you know, the town made us anchor them into the ground there. If, if the, the doors are open, so if water comes through, it'll, it'll go through them. So 
we thought about all that stuff. I mean, the alternative would be to build something which is two and a half stories tall. You know what I mean? We'll be back, we'll be back here, you know, talking about how I'm building a, uh, building a two-story building, mixed-use, you know, uh, you know mixed-use facility where it's going to block everyone's views who's behind me. And that's not what we're proposing. And that's not what we're talking about. But when you ask these questions like, geez, what could be there? I think that what we got right now there is pretty sweet, you know? And so let's work together and figure out a way to make it work. And um, I'm here to listen. I've made the offer to talk to anybody. But as the gentleman said, let's be the party of how. I think that was the, uh, one of the best things I heard tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you. Why don't you just say it the the town planner just wanted to address that one point. So, Ms. Satota. So, um, the maximum building coverage according to the zone standards are on your site plan itself, and it says 35% um, for the waterfront district. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, one thing. I, so, I just wanted to acknowledge receipt of a few different emails. Um, Kathy Pierce in opposition, uh, Mary Cotter, we got a written remark from as well. Richard and Dickie Hawkins in favor. Uh, Bob Mitchell in favor. And I think I had one more. Hang on one sec, folks. There's just a lot in here. And Kathleen Carlisle uh, in opposition. So those are the last ones that I had. Mr. Henrik, you had a question? Uh, no, I just didn't. I mean, at this point, I don't know that we'll have the opportunity to discuss it. So I don't know if we want to. Um, if you have any last questions for the petitioner um, that we need to know before we close the public hearing, which I intend to do at the conclusion of this, now would be well, the right time. Can he come back when we discuss this and vote on it to mm -hmm. answer questions at that time? Uh, Mr. Florek. Uh, Alexander Florek, counsel for the Zoning Com Commission tonight. Um, no, once the public hearing is closed, I don't think it would be appropriate for the applicant to address the Zoning Commission's concerns. So it's sort of speak now or forever hold your, true, uh, hold, hold your peace. But uh, sorry, did I say that right? Um, it's been a long day for me too. Um, but I think as Chairman Sohavy noted, um, if the applicant consents, the public hearing could be kept open for an additional 35 days uh, but he would have to consent to that now um, because I think that, you know, under 8-7D of the Connecticut General Statutes, you have 35 days once a public hearing is open to complete it. And I, I think today or tomorrow is day 35. So unless the applicant consents to keeping it open for an additional 35 days, uh, tonight's the last night to address issues. I mean, well... I mean, for the interest of time, I'm looking at, you know, it's 11 o'clock, we have two more applications. Mm -hmm. How long do we want to drag this on tonight? Um, at this point, I have no other, I'm not planning, uh, I'm just going to call for a vote on closing the petition right now, unless you have anything else that you want to cover, sir. No, I suppose not, then. Okay. Okay, in that case, can we have a motion to close the petition? Motion to close. Motion to close, Mr. Henrik. Second, Mr. Vigliotti. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. So what this does now is the public hearing portion is closed. Um, this starts a 65-day clo clock for the Zoning Commission to render a decision. Uh, we will take it up um, at the point where we may discuss it later, but at this point the public hearing is closed and we have to move on to our other two petitions. So we will let you know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and if you will please exit as quietly as possible, that'd be appreciated. 2792 Main Street, petition of Kern Volkswagen Incorporated. Folks, please take your conversations outside. We need to talk about the next petition. Hmm? 
Okay, I'm just going to read this now so that we can move forward. 2792 Pet Main Street petition of Curran Volkswagen Incorporated seeking a site plan review and modification of a special case approval to legalize site improvements to a car storage lot incidental to a car dealership in an LB zone. Can we have order? In Mike. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your patience and my apologies. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm attorney Max Case. My office is at 185 Plains Road in Milford. Mm -hmm. I'm here on behalf of Curran Volkswagen, Inc. Uh, our site plan and modification um, regarding a second entrance in into uh, their car storage lot. I'm just gonna say for the record, Mr. Chairman, um, I've served on the Board of Aldermen in Milford. I served as City Attorney in Milford. I served in the State Senate in Connecticut. I know what it's like to sit here late at night, so we'll try to be brief. Um, Thank you, Senator, I appreciate that. You're quite welcome. Um, so just to give some framework to this, uh, you previously approved on May 7, 2018, uh, legalizing the establishment of a parking lot for storage of motor vehicles. Um, incidental to the dealership that's across the street. Um, Mr. Curran is here. He would like to speak in favor of his application and explain to you what the application is all about. Mm -hmm. Good evening, sir. Good evening. <clears throat> um, I'll make this brief. I think this is simply a misunderstanding. Um, this started in 2017 with uh, our property across the street. We had a building on there that we never used. It's been empty for 40 years. It was mm -hmm. in disrepair and it needed a tremendous amount of uh, repair. So we decided to take it down and remove it. We did environmental remediation. We did uh, phase one and phase two. We we uh, remediated a lot of the materials, and uh, the intent was just to make a parking lot out of it, uh, or repave it and stripe it. It's been a parking lot for 40 years. We've never used it for any other reason. Uh, uh, you know, it's our intent now to keep it a parking lot. The town approached me after the building went down and said, we'd like to talk to you about making some improvements to the exterior. And I said, okay, I'm happy to talk talk about it. Uh, we went back and forth. They originally wanted me to hide or, or, or put some kind of barrier between the street and the, and the parking lot. And I said, well, wait a minute. You want me to hide the cars? I, 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 I said, I'd be opposed to that. Uh, they said, well, what about some kind of facial wall that you couldn't, uh, you couldn't see the cars? And that was, again, a, 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 an issue. So as a compromise, I agreed to a three-foot wall, and we agreed that we would put the three-foot wall up and put some lighting on it, and then I would pave it, and then we'd be done with it. From the time of the building coming down and the approval for the, th for the three-foot wall was a year's time where I was able to operate the property without the building on it. I've never had uh, use of that space. So we discovered quickly that it wouldn't be efficient to have that wall based on that old curb cut. The old curb cut was to the right of the property and uh, that would uh, uh, prevent me from uh, plowing in the winter on the left and it, it would require me to stack cars which would be inefficient. So it left me with two choices, either Put, move the cut to the center and park cars left and right or add a cut so that I can have trucks coming in, in, in one and out the other and I would have a lane in the middle and cars on both sides. And that's what we uh, determined would be the most efficient, effective means to have a, uh, a car lot there. Uh, my engineers that designed the plan, the same engineers that did the original plan, and I was told that I need state approval to do that. So we went to the DOT 
and we spent a year going back and forth with plans in order to add the curb cut, um, which over time we did. We changed it five or six times. We got approval. I hired a contractor. He started the work. Uh, he finished the wall, and then I got a letter from zoning saying, cease and desist. You, 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 didn't, uh, you didn't do what we approved here. I didn't know I had to come back here and get a second approval. And, um, and that's where we are. The, 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 uh, the contractor uh, dealt with uh, Tracy May at DOT. She lives in Stratford. She drives by that property every day. She knows it and is very familiar with it. She said, go ahead and do the work. And he, and he started it. And then I got a cease and desist order. And then we got COVID. And here we are a year later or two years later. Um, and um, I'm just asking, I'm going to still finish it. There were some comments by Jay that I didn't finish the work. Well, he asked me to stop doing the work. So I intend to finish the work, add the wall on Barnum Avenue side. I'll put lights on the wall, and I'm going to pave it. And, and, that, and that's, that's why I'm here. Mm. Okay, um, so just so I understand, so are you asking to modify the condition or are you, I'm not sure <laughs> what you're asking us to do, just can you clarify, clarify well, that? I, I'm asking that the, the, uh, the plan that was approved by DOT yes. be approved by the town of Stratford. Okay, and, oh, the plan, and I, I believe, believe the plan I, was we, provided to us, is that correct? Yes, yes it is. Yes. Mm. Okay. That looks very straightforward. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Please. Uh, due to the lateness of the evening, yeah. I forgot to give you the certificates of mail. Oh, good catch. Thank you. Um, do you have a paper copy of the DOT plan? If not, says me, do we have one of those? Yeah, we don't. Yeah. If you don't, we're not going to hold it up. Oh, you do have one? Okay. Um, Sismita has one, Mike. Okay, there you go. Um, while Mike's looking at that, any questions from the other commissioners? When, when we had done this originally, it was quite some time back. Part mm -hmm. of it, I know, included Mr. for that. had some discussion with you as well about the height, the height of the wall. It was going to be a center center opening that would allow you to park on the right and the left. No, the original one was just the old curb cut was on the right side of the property along the fence of People's Bank. Yeah. And, and uh, so when we submitted the, when we submitted the plan, uh, the engineer used the existing curb cut. And then we discovered after being able to use the property for a year and a half, uh, that 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 wouldn't work for us. We we, we would have had to either move it to the center of the of the of the property, or add or leave that and just add a second one so we'd have access because we have trucks that come in every day, uh, uh, picking up and delivering vehicles, and this is the most efficient, effective way to use that property. <clears throat> So we'll still have the three foot high. It's still going to have the wall. The wall's there now. I didn't finish it because I was told to stop. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, it, it's, it's not paved. It's been. It's not paved because I, again, I, I was told I got a cease and desist order to stop all work there by Jay. <clears throat> And, and there was another, maybe it was a separate application as well. Some of the work that was on Main Street on your on your main property included planning strips around the front edges of the property. You were going to do some work. On well, the that building. wasn't. Well, I have I have five properties over there, and there's been a discussion on all five of them. And I've done a lot of work on the corner of Essex and Barnum, mm -hmm. and I've done some landscaping on that corner. 
and uh, you know there's there's nothing that uh, is in the works for the main property right now. No, it's just on the corner of Essex. I think we were talking. It, it was part of it included, I think, the house that's there. Part of it included the old gas station and turning that into some kind of a, a detailing. There was there was grass planting strips around the entire property, but I, that might have been a separate application. They were presented at the same time. Yeah, yeah. no, that wasn't. I, it was a separate um, application. Okay. Yeah, I mean, check your records. There was there was planning strips and, and <coughs> a bunch of other work that was supposed to take place there. But so I mean, I get. So this is just changing the two the two right curb cuts on this. Yeah, that's yeah. it. When, I mean, when's this property? When's the work going to be done? It's been as soon as I get approval. I've been, you know. The state won't sign off until the town signs off, and the town won't sign off until the state signs off. So and, I'm kind of stuck in the middle. And you're going to be doing some type of work on the, on the Barnum Ave? On Barnum Ave, I'm going to do the same three-foot wall. It'll be one entrance, and there'll be lights on it, just like this side. <clears throat> okay. Were there any comments for Mr. Hermansky or? There is a uh, letter that he wrote. Um. Hi, I have a question. Mr. Vigliotti. All right, so yeah, um, it, um, you were in 2018, the plan was approved. Uh, three trees were supposed to be planted. That wasn't part of the approval. There, 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 are, there are on file probably a dozen plans because we were going back and forth with different ideas. The tree, the tree idea wouldn't work where that is because I have trucks going in and out of there and it would be a safety issue that would block the view of these trucks that come in and out of, uh, of Main Street. <clears throat> So, so you're saying that the, the only thing that was specifically detailed in the approval, to my understanding, were the three-foot wall and the lighting. So it says trees and shrubs. Well, trees and shrubs uh, pertains to the front lawn, which we haven't finished because uh, you can't finish. We can't finish. <clears throat> so when you get approval to finish, right. Then I, I plan to put some kind of landscaping in front of the wall. Trees or shrubs. I mean, we didn't design it yet, but... <clears throat> well, the approval says three trees, and then um, shrubs would be planted behind the wall. I, I don't see the point of putting trees behind the wall that you can't see. I don't I, 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 No, it says shrubs behind the wall. Well, shrubs behind the wall that you can't see. I don't want to see how that's even reasonable. <clears throat> Why would you put shrubs behind the wall you can't see? That's what it says. <laughs> I know, I'm just... <laughs> and, and I do remember the conversations and... and from what I remember, I could be Mr. Fredeka correct me, but part of the reason why we lowered the wall to three feet was so that, as you stated, the, you would have visual visual access to the parking lot so right. your cars wouldn't be getting damaged and robbed and whatever else. I, I do remember that part of it, um, that the wall be lower originally. Mr. Bansky wanted a taller wall with an archway, right. and, and in our discussions, right. we reduced that to just a right. smaller decorative wall that would allow you visual access into the parking lot. So right. I, I, so I don't know that the, the shrubs would have been part of that, but I, I don't have the paperwork, but I'm just going from memory. Uh, Commissioner Fresh is here. Um, so the only deviation of this is just the, the two curb cuts, that's it, or is there more? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I, I was on the original. I don't have a problem with the change. You know, it, it seems pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. So, um, I mean, the other things, I think there's some open-ended 
issues from, I, for, I mean, in, in that, we don't even get that discussion tonight, but I think there's some open-ended issues on some of the other applications. That's some stuff you guys are going to have to address and, and just uh, go also, back and look at the records and see exactly what it says so that you're aware of the full, in, the full extent of what you agreed to and what we voted on that night. But as far as this change, just to expedite the process, it's been, you know, grassy and overgrown just to clean that area up. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. It's a minimal change in my eyes. So. It will certainly expedite the process. If, if you approve it, then we can go ahead and finish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But right now, we can't do anything. Just because it's been brought to my attention, um, this was the planting plan, I believe, that was submitted. Is that correct? You can come in here if you want to see it. I've, we've seen that. You've I seen that? That, that's, yeah. that? I believe that's the plan that, that's in the file. And again, as, as my client has said, mm -hmm. after he started the process, he, came, he realized that that was not doable because, first of all, the question of ingress and egress, and second of all, the question of visibility, uh, mm -hmm. having particularly the trees block uh, sight lines for vehicles that were coming in and coming out. So that has to be addressed, but we have to get this addressed first before we can address that. Okay. Well, that, that's part of the problem, yes. Exactly. Because this is a state highway. And we have to do what they tell us is acceptable. Mr. Fredet? Yeah, if I may. Uh, witnessing it during the daytime, mm -hmm. two curb cuts or the two driveways that are there now have added tremendously of keeping the trucks off the street. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Mr. Curran states that they offload and unload uh, the trucks. So, uh, again, it wasn't part of the original, and he's, you know, I don't uh, see it being an issue. You do not see it as being an issue? It's not. Correct. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. Any further questions from members? Hearing none, we'll take a motion to close. Motion to close, Mr. Henrick. Second, Mr. Francis. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. We will be Thank taking it up much. this evening. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Last but not least, and again, my apologies, George, petition, 2965 Main Street petition of George J. Parham seeking a site plan review and special case to establish an art gallery and tattoo studio in a CA zone. Chairman, Commissioners, Chris Russo with Russo and Rizzio LLC offices at 10 Sasco Hill Road in Fairfield. Here on behalf of the petitioner, George Perham, I will try to be um, as succinct as possible. Um, we are here for site plan review and uh, special case approval to establish an art gallery and tattoo studio. Um, the property is located at 2965 Main Street. Um, and Properties here at 2965 Main Street. It is owned uh, by the same owner of the uh, 20 at 2979 Main Street. Uh, that is the uh, Little Red School of Art and Music, which many of you uh, may be familiar with. Um, and it is located in the CA zone. Uh, it has direct access from Main Street, a single driveway that enters here um, to a parking area behind the existing building. Uh, there is also a access point back on James Street. Um, there's a gate, there's a, there's a fence that runs along the entire rear property line, uh, and there's a gate here that access, accesses out to James Street. Uh, we went to ZBA previously and received approval from ZBA uh, for some variances that I'll discuss. Uh, part of the, uh, one of the conditions of approval um, was that this gate would be used for emergency uh, purposes only. And, and so we would, you know, accept that as a condition of approval should it be granted um, tonight. Uh, the site contains an existing two and a half story building, which I'm sure many of you have driven by thousands of times. Uh, it contains a little over uh, 3,000 square feet 
uh, floor area, and again, the parking area is to the rear. The petitioner proposes to uh, establish an art gallery and tattoo studio within this existing building, uh, which is permitted in the CA zone under section 7.1.13, and again, subject to special case uh, approval. Um, it is a regular retail service use. The uh, regulations do put some extra um, requirements on tattoo parlors. Uh, it's, it's a bit outdated. It, it, tattoo parlors, which I, I think have, the view of tattoo parlors has changed over, over the years, but it is lumped in with adult-oriented businesses and there is a regulation that requires uh, separation of uses, um, so ta that tattoo parlors have to be um, uh, separated from residential districts uh, and uh, certain other uses. We received a waiver, I have a copy of that, that I can submit for the record, but we received a, uh, a waiver from the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for that requirement right here. So this was just received on uh, July 7th. It could be, is it, maybe you have a copy in the file. Okay. <laughs> I can take it back. Okay. Um, so the, the really, we're, we're not asking for much of a change from what is currently there. Uh, this, this current building is used for music lessons, art lessons, it's, it's, it's an art studio. And uh, what we're proposing is just a different, basically a different type of art. Uh, Mr. Perham, his son, has run uh, a tattoo parlor that's further down on Main Street. Uh, it has been there for 11 years. Um, and it's also in the CA zone. He has had no complaints. Um, and uh, is well respected in the area and he's simply looking to move uh, up to this property again in the CA zone on Main Street um, to, uh, to do his work there along with uh, some fellow tattoo artists um, but in reality it is, it, it is the same thing it is a form of art uh, Mr. Purim is extremely talented and, and his fellow tattoo artists. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, your girlfriend's initials with a heart around it. It's, it, it's an actual piece of art that they, that they uh, spend a lot of time working on um, to, um, uh, you know, to, for their clients. I'm going to ask Mr. Purim uh, to come in. He's going to explain uh, the operation um, to you. Um, but again, this is, and, and I'll come back to, to speak as to the special case standards, but this is really, it, it, it is an existing um, art studio, music, uh, it's where music lessons are, are held, and it's going to switch to uh, a tattoo parlor, which is really, you know, almost the same exact thing, um, just a different form. So, Mr. Perm, if you want to... Uh, good evening. <clears throat> For the record, my name is George Perham. I'm the uh, president and owner of VIA Visionary Interiors Architecture. My address is 301 Merritt 7 in Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, I'm the architect for FTS Gallery, and more importantly, it's my son, um, or just as importantly, it's my son. Um, so tonight, um, this is actually the type of client that, um, you know, um, is easy to work for because for all intents and purposes, <clears throat> We're not really doing any construction whatsoever with the exception. So we had the first floor and the, the existing footprint remains. We have reception office, art gallery, artist booth where George's booth will reside, and then a kitchenette and laboratory for the st uh, staff. On the second floor, we have um, five other artist booths um, that will be relocated to here. And then on the top floor is basically just storage and sort of a getaway for the artist when they're um, not dealing with a client. Um, George and I met with the fire marshal and the building inspector, and they have approved the plan um, because it's not a change of use. Um, they didn't require any construction whatsoever. George also met, met with the um, health department, and the only comment that the health department had was that we had to add a slop sink. 
So just for the record, the, each booth by um, health codes requires a sink in each booth. We had that already, and that was basically signed off on. And then they wanted to slop sink somewhere conveniently on either one of the floors. Um, so uh, that said, you know, for all intended purposes, the house is moving ready. Um, in regards to the exterior, we're not doing anything to the exterior as well. Um, George loves the house, it's historic value, and it's well known, as we all know, as a Little Red House, Little Red School, Little Red Art House, <clears throat> and he doesn't want to change that character. Um, so that's all going to stay and, and stay the way it is. Um, uh, and so for all intents and purposes, um, that, that's sort of easy. You know, this is the kind of client that I don't really enjoy because I don't make a lot of money from them, but, you know, nevertheless, we're, um, we're here seeking approval. So, thank you. Okay, to just go over the, um, the uh, standards of approval for a special case, um, which were uh, cited in uh, Jay's memo um, to the commission. Will the location, size, and intensity of such use be compatible and harmonious in relation to the size of the property and existing neighborhood development? Um, yes, as stated, you know, as we've stated, there's no change to the exterior of the site. We are making internal changes. Um, what are currently um, six music lesson rooms are going to be converted into artist booths. Um, it's very controlled. Uh, the patrons will make appointments. Uh, sometimes they will meet with the tattoo artist first to go over the design and, and, and work it out and, and make tweaks to it and then actually come in for another appointment to to get the tattoo, so it's not people coming in and out. It, it, it's very controlled. Um, it's it's not uh, an intense use, uh, and again, nothing changing to the exterior, to the entrance to the site, um, or the parking area. Um, then, uh, in, in in comparison to the neighborhood around to the south is a medical office building. There's a shopping plaza across the street is Bank of America and the Citgo gas station. Um, and so this is frankly one of the least intense uses uh, around in that area. Uh, will the proposed use be in conformance with the town plan of development? Yes, it's in conformity with the regulations. Uh, this is a commercial retail service use. It had previously been a commercial retail service use um, and, and so it was in keeping with that. Uh, it also promotes um, the culture and, and arts in the uh, city. Um, it, uh, what, what Mr. Perham does is he actually puts uh, paintings up on the wall from local artists to create a sense of this is, you're, you're coming in for a piece of art. You're, you're not just coming in here for a, um, a, a simple uh, tattoo. It's, it's a celebration of art. The name of the gallery is actually Forest to Shore Gallery, which I'm sure you know is the, the motto for, um, uh, for the town. Um, and this, this property was specifically approved years ago for a zone change to the CA district to bolster the commercial corridor on Main Street, which is uh, one of the goals of the POCD. And, uh, and obviously, as a uh, proposed retail service uh, under that zone, uh, we believe we're um, furthering the, the POCD. Will there be any emission of noise, light, smoke, odor, odor, gas, dust, or vibration that may adversely affect land? Water, air quality, no, definitely not. We're not even um, doing work outside. Um, and, and the use certainly is, is all in the interior. Uh, will it adversely affect the tax valuation of uh, neighboring properties as a result of the pro, uh, proposed use? No, again, um, uh, it, it, this property has already been used and approved as a music and art studio. It is changing to a different type of art studio. Um, it's a very professional operation. It's not a tattoo parlor with flashing neon signs or some of the you know, kind of old uh, taboo ones that people may think of. It's very professional um, and, uh, and, and will not stand out. And finally, will the proposed use create any fire or police hazards? No, um, obviously, again, there's, there's, there's no change proposed and, and this use wouldn't, wouldn't threaten that. Um, we don't believe it will have any impact uh, on traffic. Uh, frankly, our traffic would probably be less than the, the current use that was there. Um, 
they used to offer mu uh, group lessons for, for the music lessons. This is all one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and, uh, and, and that's basically it. Um, there's, if there's any questions, Mr. Perham certainly can answer, um, or, or myself. Questions from members? Mr. Henrik? So it's really been there 11 years? His, his, his gallery that he's run, what, yeah. I, I was on the original. I, it, yeah. And yeah, me too. Oh, I were, was okay. just realizing that was a long time ago. Yeah, getting I'm getting old. <laughs> we are getting old. Um, so at the time, one of the big discussion was that this is not this is not a biker shop, right. but you know, CD tattoo place. It's actually art. His actually his mom came up and showed a painting of, of a tattoo she has. Um, but but it is art. It's it's another form of art. And, and I know George is well known around the world. And and I've been up to his shop. It is an art studio. I'm assuming he's going to the same kind of concept. Absolutely. He's, he's basically just moving that up, up to the site. Yeah. And, it, and it's all, you said it's all by appointment. So. It's all, yeah, it's by yeah. appointment and, 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 and sometimes it takes several appointments for, for Cause, cause he was over Acapulco's correct. and there was limited, you know, there was limited space, limited availability. So, uh, you know, it was low impact. It's been there 11 years. We've heard nothing negative, no, yeah, nothing you know, negative. if anybody who knows anything about the tattoo world speaks barely high, highly of him. Um, and his artistic abilities, but there, to my knowledge, have been no negative uh, complaints of, of any kind. No, and he, so. he's, he, he's been a great participant in the community, uh, helping with a number of charities in the town, and, uh, and, and it's, it's Stratford's his home for his business, and that's why it's called Forest to Shore. Awesome. So, all right, so, so it's going to be, it's basically going to be identical to what it is now, just moved to a different location. Yeah, a little bit more breathing room in a yeah, different location. Okay. And then there were some other comments from, I think, the health department. Plans should include uh, application specification sheets for the floors and walls. Equipment shall be smooth and easily be cleanable. Adequate lighting shall be provided. And I assume you guys are aware of all those. Yes, and items. we would agree to those as okay. conditional approval. All right, so. that's all I had. Questions from other members? Mr. Francis? Yeah, the only, um, well, you said that you were going to actually... Uh, Perform to those conditions, and also the condition for the uh, the, the access for the uh, James Street rear Correct. entrance. Correct. So the, all those conditions, you are definitely going to be yes, it's part of our ZBA approval as well. But yes, and, and for for this approval, we uh, we would accept that as a condition. Of approval. Oh, okay, thank you. Just for emergency purposes. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Vigliotti? Uh I, I don't know if um, is is the artist here like. Uh, hi. So um, you um, you use needles and things like that to to make a tattoo, correct? And then yeah, why don't you come up and just give us your name and address? And, and Mr. Vigilati wants a demonstration too, so you know, be ready. Uh, George Firm, twenty four fifteen Main Street is the shop address now. Uh, so um, I, I'm just curious, like, so in, in terms of like um, you know keeping those things clean and and. I don't even know. Like, uh, do do you have any kind of like um, everything that we use is disposable, um, so it's all one-time use. All gets put into biohazard, and we have that all professionally picked up. Um, that's all documented, and the health department checks that twice a year when they come and inspect us. So, so you have a um, a service that comes and takes away all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, all, all right. biohazard stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any bounce? Um, my only question is on the third floor, I don't see anything labeled. Are you doing anything with the third floor? That's just going to be uh, storage. Storage? Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Anybody in the... <laughs> There's anybody left. Is there anybody that wishes to speak in favor or opposition? <laughs> Hearing none. We'll take a motion to close. Mr. Vigliotti, second. Ms. Manos, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. And at long last, we'll take a motion to close our total public, adjourn our recess, our public hearing. Mr. Francis, second. Mr. Ms. Manos, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. We're adjourned at uh, we're recessed out of the public hearing at 1116. Yes, sir. Did we get all of the uh, applications? There are two items, uh, Lordship Boulevard and Benton Street, that are listed on our administrative agenda. So I believe oh. we'll take it as during during the meeting. If oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Mistaken. I'm sorry. Okay. Just yeah, we, we sure. won't we won't let it. We won't lose that. Okay. Does anybody need a bathroom break? Any break of any kind? 
You did it. I need to grab a glass of water. I'm just dry, drying out right now. <laughs> so, so actually, Mr. Henrik, you're our vice chair. How would you like to preside over the uh, starting the discussion? And uh, or do you want a break too? We can take a break. I, I just need two minutes to get some water, and I'll be right back. So we'll, we'll stand at ease, and we'll pick up in just two minutes. Okay. Mr. Henrik, I just want to let you know that for 214 Benton Street, uh, the Waterfront Harbor Management Commission has requested some more time to review that application. Um, so I don't know if you would want to discuss it this month or... Um, they said their meeting, their next meeting is in August 1st week or August 11th or something. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> For the platypus? What? I, it, August 26th is a, dead, uh, is a time when you have to render a decision. So you have two zoning commission meetings before that, August 11th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to call to order the um, administrative session of the Zoning Commission. Um, we are, just for the record, we are not going to take up 4060 Beach Drive, Washington Parkway. It's going to be a protracted discussion, um, and I think we need to be able to deliberate, and it's way too late to deliberate. So there. Um, so let's pick up, let's start with uh, 584 Success Avenue. Mr. Uh, Henrik, you want to make a motion to take yeah, off the table? Yeah, motion, well, you mean take it off the table? Or? Yep, take motion, it off the table. Yep. Motion to take 584 Success Avenue off the table. Motion of Mr. Henrik. Is there a second? Mr. Vigliotti, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no, carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve 584 Success Avenue. Motion to approve by Mr. Henrik. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Francis. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. It, it seems like that the, the use is is fairly benign for the area. They they've started some of the work. They, in a sense, did some prior to their knowledge that they needed to go through this permit process. There were no complaints at the time. Uh, it seems to fit. It's a commercial, commercially zoned district. Is is not uh, is in is in character with the other the other operations in the area. Mm -hmm. so I would uh, make a motion to approve. Okay. Uh, further discussion, members? And I, and I think just one other point is they've been made aware if they do any special large gatherings, they, they, they will need to come to get special permits for those. Mm -hmm. So, I Yeah, I believe that we that was a good thing that we had that discussion in front of them and their council so that they're aware of what the procedures are. Um, I know they're going to be utilizing that. They may end up utilizing that rear parking lot, um, and it seems like appropriate notice has been given to the abutting property owners. Um, I tend to, to, I will agree with you, sir. It seems like um, this is a, uh, a good move there and uh, they seem to be very responsible about what they're doing in the place. Further comments from members? Mr. Vigliotti. Yeah, uh, part of the comments uh, had to do with um, proper uh, certification and inspection. Yes. Uh, they, they did get the fire marshal, but it didn't appear that there was any other if, if they had been be before anybody else, they seem to have do done most of the work before they, so um, I don't know if that's, well, I'm saying the same thing, but I think that mm -hmm. that should be a stipulation for approval as well. Yep. Okay, I'm just looking through the notes real quick here. Um, this was also a special case. I didn't get the impression that there was going to be any emission of noise, light, smoke, odor, gas, and the usual. But all, all the health department and building permits will come yeah. once they officially begin the work, I think. so. Fire and they're not going to have a liquor permit either, so that takes that off the, you know, we'll obviously have to monitor if there's any issues, but it seems like they're acting up and up. And it's, uh, I don't believe there's any issue with the planning conservation development, so it's actually using a retail use as a gathering space. Seems pretty straightforward to me. Ms. Atala? I think what Mr. Vigliotti is mentioning is the last line in the staff report where uh, Jay mentions that they have to legalize any work that has been done mm -hmm. before submitting for the permit, and maybe that should be a condition for the approval. 
I mean, don't you mean that? Yes. Okay. Okay, I didn't get that. Sorry. Can we? Add, would you object to adding that? Okay, yeah. we can make that a condition of approval. And the seconder, Mr. Francis, I think it was. I think we're good to add that in there. For the discussion, if not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, motion to take 2792 Main Street, current Volkswagen Inc. off the table. Motion, Mr. Director, takes 2792 Main Street off the table. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Manos. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve 2792 Main Street, current Volkswagen. Motion approved by Mr. Henrik to approve 2792. Is there a second? Mr. Vigliotti? Uh, discussion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Sir. This uh, seems like a small, small uh, deviation from the original application. The, the, the state DOT has looked at it and approved it. It will approve the efficiency. It will help them expedite what it is they're looking to do and make it effective. It's been sitting for a long time, and, and anything we can do to get that lot cleaned up, there seems to be no negative impact to it whatsoever. So uh, I would be in favor of it. Okay, further discussion by members? Mr. Francis. Yeah, um, I, I, do we have to do any kind of mediation if he doesn't proceed with the original uh, bushes uh, behind the wall? So, so when I looked at the plan, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I did not see a stamp, a date stamp on it. So I don't know, like he said, whether there was a plan in the works or there was a final plan submitted. My recollection was, and, and I think Mr. Fredad will concur, concur, that the, the shrubs and brushes weren't a part of it because that, the, the reason why we lowered the wall was to allow better sight lines and, and adding shrubs or trees of any kind would have, would A, deter your sight lines to the road and B, deter your visual sight lines into the lot, so. Please, sir. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's why I was a little confused as to which property we were actually talking about when we started that. And it's like, oh no, wait a minute. This is the other side of the street. So. Mm -hmm. But the only, so the only change we're making with this is is the the curb cuts. Any other. Any other uh, criteria of the original application would not change. Right. So. I mean, right now it seems like he's in a, in a state of paralysis between the state approval and the, the town approval, and it's a state highway, and it seems like we're not getting anywhere fast. I don't see a major problem with this application. We're not, but we're also not taking any away any of the other no. criteria, just this one yep. minor alteration. And if it seems to be working more efficiently, I'm supporting that. Yep. Uh, without, well, with, with no decrease of uh, any of the uh, other, uh, any other uh, stipulations. Right, stipulations, and it's only it's not extreme extreme deviation. Mm -hmm. It's only an extra curb cut. Um, I, I definitely would approve this uh, application. Okay. Further remarks? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, motion to take 2965 Main Street, George J. Perm, off the table. Motion by Mr. Chairman to take 2965 Main Street, George J. Perm, off the table. Is there a second? Mr. Vigliotti, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Mr. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve 2965 Main Street, George Perm. Motion to approve 2965 Main Street. Is there a second? Again, Mr. Francis, discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Perm, uh, Forest Ashore uh, Art Gallery Tattoo Shop has been a great, a great neighbor uh, over the uh, Acapulco's property. They've, they've, uh, you know, in, in, in the tattoo world, they've they put Stratford on the map. He's also got the art gallery. Um, it's it's an uh, almost identical use to what's there now. It's just diff different form of art, um, but I think based on on Forest Ashore's uh, past history. And their their location to a, to a similar, maybe even more uh, similar to, to what they're they're doing. I would I would support this application. Okay. Further discussion. Sure, Francis. Yes, I also had uh, a lot of positive feedback about that uh, that uh, tattoo uh, art that they provide. Um, they've been there for a while, and I've known about them. I have a couple of friends that are in that industry. And I've heard nothing but positive things, so I would approve them also. Okay. 
Ms. Hittum, do you have a um, remark? Yes. Um, the third floor plan, uh, if that could be labeled as storage, um, that'll be helpful for enforcement's sake in the future. Okay. Should we let Ms. Manos anything? No? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to echo the remarks of Mr. Henrik, and uh, it is in conformance with with our plans. Um, I actually remember, I can't believe that was 11 years ago, I think I actually voted against it the first time, and I got to tell you, the, the, uh, the feedback I've gotten has been very positive all around, so I was wrong <laughs> at that point. But I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I can admit that, and um, I'm, I, I'm glad to see actually um, the repurposing of the Little Red Schoolhouse. I've known a lot of people that have taken advantage of their programs. It's an asset in the community and, and a well-known landmark. Uh, so that continuing its uh, uh, commitment to the arts uh, scene in Stratford, arts community in Stratford, uh, even if it's in a slightly different way, I think is actually a positive. Um, and um, we will obviously, the BZA uh, is part of their approval, so that should still stay in um, um, as part of the approval as well. I don't think we have to separately state it, but I think it's, it's implied that that will stay there. I think we're good to go. And the, and the only other stipulation was the use of the uh, rear gate for emergency use. Use of the rear gate, which that but was. That, that was with another. That was with the BZA, BZA right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Sulevi. Yes. Quick question. Mm -hmm. So, how would we accept the new site plan without your condition on that, that they should resubmit the site plan with the label on it on the third floor? Can we just record it on the. I'm not going to hold it up, to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't want to. Okay. It's I mean, okay. if you want to write it, hand write it in on the plans right now. <laughs> well, we, can that, we can make that a stipulation of, of the approval that the, the new yeah. plan would would. You know, let's let's do, let's do it let's do it that way. Can you actually make a motion that affects so that it's very clear in the record? Say, you motion to that we I'd stipulate. Make you, a motion. I'd make a motion to amend my my motion to uh, require. Uh, a site plan be submitted clearly labeling the third floor. If that's what you thought. The third mm -hmm. floor as storage. Okay. Is there a second? Yes. Second by Mr. Bigliotti. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? I think that should satisfy uh, the conditions there and they'll be clear and it should just be administrative thing to drop off a new copy of the thing with it labeled. Yeah. All right. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Any further discussion on the application as amended? If not, all in favor say aye. All right. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Congratulations. Best of luck. Do you want to? Yeah. Do we have anything with the campsite, or can they all wait? No. Let's just do approval of minutes. Oh, Benton is part of the campsite. But that's going to wait. Um, oh, Lordship Boulevard, they're all part of the campsite. Yeah. So we'll take, so let's just do approval of the minutes and then we'll get down right down to the last two parts. So can I have a motion to motion approve the minutes? Motion to approve minutes? the minutes of June 23rd, 2021. Motion to approve Mr. Henrik. Is there a second? Okay. Second by Ms. Manos. Any discussion, corrections, changes? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Our campsite reviews. Again, 4060 Beach is staying on the table, so 775-975 Lordship Boulevard is the petitioner, applicant, still standing with us. Good evening. Okay, Ms. Atala, can you please just bring us up to speed here? It's been a long night. Yes. Um, so uh, the petition is to, uh, to downsize uh, the master plan that was previously submitted a few years ago by the petitioner. So um, in the staff report, if you see, um, let me just, let's, sorry. No problem. Okay, um, I have the 214 Bending Street. I'm sorry, my paperwork is all over the place. But I would like to let you know uh, before I move on to this paperwork that um, this was um, sent for uh, Connecticut Deep's feedback on uh, May 14th, I guess, or sometime in June. Um, but Deep staff was busy with enforcement. They never got back with their comments, and they kind of, you know, uh, the window of offering the feedback uh, has passed. Uh, it's been more than... Um, 
35 days. Mm -hmm. They requested for more time, but uh, technically, you know, you don't have to uh, abide by it uh, because they did not render a decision in time. Mm -hmm. And um, this application um, is pretty straightforward. It was previously approved as part of a master plan development. I, uh, the, I would let the applicant speak to the f uh, square footage of the previously proposed uh, building, mm -hmm. but now it is roughly 63,000 square feet. Uh, so they're downsizing it. Um, and I would like Mr. Casey to take over. Mr. Casey, you want to give us the, uh, the two minute version? Good evening and <laughs> thank you all very much. Uh, well done uh, to get to this point and I <laughs> will be as brief as I can. Um, this uh, plan was approved in 2016, 137,700 square foot. Uh, facility on 975 Lordship. At the time, there was uh, nothing shown on 775, 2.3 acre parcel. But going back before that, there was 530,000 feet. So, I mean, the master plan has had uh, a, a large uh, development with large parking. And the important thing to, to look at is, uh, you know, the history of this application going back from 2014 to now. It started with 530,000 feet. We came back and got FedEx approved for 225. We got 137,000 approved, but couldn't get the deal done. And now we're back with 63,000. So you've got 42 acres with a lot less building than was originally permitted. And in addition to that, all the stormwater development plans were designed to um, manage 530,000 feet of, of building with the maximum parking permitted, uh, close to 29 acres. As the plan stands before you today, uh, the request to have it modified reduces that stormwater almost three acres. So um, we're actually going to have three acres less of impervious area. However, the improvements for the stormwater have already been installed. They're already on the site. So we have far in excess of anything the DEP could want to see with any comments they were to give us uh, if they had given us some. And I have their comments from 2016 and they were very similar with stormwater and they were just talking about flood elevations and at the time they didn't read the, the revised uh, flood map in 2013 and they said we needed to raise the building and that was you know three years after FEMA had changed the elevation. So we're in full compliance with anything DEP gave us in writing prior and for the application before you I think we have just a couple of things that were submitted. We had comments from John Casey and we had comments from staff we introduced letters. I have some, if you don't have them, um, I can hand them in. And we also uh, went through the ARB. They made five recommendations and we responded to all five. Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, again, a letter with that was sent as well. And I, I'm not sure what you all have before you uh, with Jay on vacation and so many things going across your desk this evening. Yeah, let's just make sure we have everything. I think we do. And, and you're- Go ahead, Mike. The, the, the uh, five, Stipulations from the ARB, you guys are, are in agreement with? They're they're in agreement, but not a hundred percent. I mean, there's a there's a response to each one. I think the one that um, they talked about uh, uh, moving the facade, rotating the building was we're going to just plant some things to sort of, you know, keep the building square to the sight lines and just shield it with some some uh, shrubbery and stuff. Uh, but again, there were five comments. I would say four were very close to what they asked for. And I have it. If you want to see it, I'm happy to give it and, to you. And they've agreed with your with your. Well, they don't get us. They just make a recommendation, okay. and then we come before you and and, and 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 talk about what we can accommodate, and then hopefully we we uh, have done enough. Mm -hmm. First time through ARB, by the way. So. No, I appreciate you take you know uh, considering what they have to say. So they have, they have, let's see, five comments here. Increase and improve landscaping along Larcher Boulevard, including all parking areas between the one-way drive and the existing retention basin. That's and, one. And we, res I don't know if you have the responses, but I, I do. Uh, maybe we're, I do. We're adding six new uh, white fir trees, uh, and there are two existing street trees along the frontage. Supplemental to these trees, 11 new evergreen shrubs will be added. Mm -hmm. We'll grow to six-foot height. So, I mean, their first comment, we pretty much... Uh, I think addressed. Okay, let me just go to number two. Number two, move the parking area of lot three to the south to allow for landscape along the road if consistent with zoning regulations. 
And so that, that parking plan was modified to not share an entrance with the FedEx parking lot to keep the tenants separate. Mm -hmm. There's a sidewalk on some of that frontage, so part of our property had to be dedicated to the sidewalk because there's not enough state land to accommodate the sidewalk, so that ate up some of the land. Mm -hmm. But there are uh, existing uh, uh, street trees that were planted and we're adding uh, evergreen shrubs along the frontage so that the screen uh, to the parking area to Lordship Boulevard should, uh, should be accommodated. Um, what was the one that you could not conform to? Let's, let's cut to the chase. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Yeah. Consider articulation of the north facing facade along Lordship Boulevard, basically what? rotating the building. Oh, okay. Um, oh yeah. okay, I see what they said. Okay. Pretty, pretty far reaching with some of those. That's, 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 that's a all pretty big, large reach. You know, they're all architects, right? Yeah. So uh, the, the applicant's proposing 47 evergreen shrubs north of the one-way drive oh. aisle north of the frontage facing the building that will grow to two to three feet height and the plantings will provide additional screening of the north face inside of the building in addition to the street trees and the natural vegetation at the detention pond such that any building facade improvements will not be necessary. That was the only one I think we yeah, that, that met them that seems somewhere in the, the middle. middle. stretch. So, yeah. And then the town engineer's comments and Jay's comments are, are again, those are, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, documents you have. Uh, the town engineer's comments are mostly related to stormwater, just mopping up on what's required, and we're 100% in compliance mm -hmm. um, on stormwater. Mr. Okay, uh, um Deep also needed more time because they didn't have drainage plans, and they kind of, uh, I see where they're going based mm -hmm. on what town engineer has commented on. Yep. So if you will, you know, if you as a commission will choose to adhere to the town engineer's comments, I'm assuming it will satisfy Deep's concerns as well. And okay, I'm, they, I'm just going to add, Deep and everyone else is looking at meeting the most recent regulations. Well, we're next to the bathtub. We don't discharge anything to the town's systems. And as I explained earlier, we designed for 29 acres of impervious area. Um, we, improve, we built all those improvements. The ponds were designed to that size. And we're actually going to end up with three acres less. And that pretty much whittles down all the stormwater comments. Okay, so if we, just to, to move things along, so if we approve pending, you know, conformance with the DEEP, if they have any major concern that we're not thinking well, of, I won't agree to okay? anything that DEEP hasn't submitted, okay. blanketly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just nothing I can do. Um, I have their comments from the 2016 application. I'd okay. submit those on the record. Um, and here's what I would like to say to you all. They told us that we had the wrong elevation for the building. Mm -hmm. They said you have to raise the building. Their letters dated 2016. Okay. The FEMA flood plans that were in effect at the time mm -hmm. were revised in 2013. They didn't even roll out the right map to write the letter uh, that they sent on okay. comments. So we, we, we knew what the requirements were. Mm -hmm. um, that was their comments. That was the, all the comments they issued to us. And I'm very leery of agreeing to anything DEP hasn't said yet. Okay, I got and understand. So, so I mean, just let me understand this. So, so they, they had a deadline to reply. Mm -hmm. They haven't, Essential. which I understand, yeah. you know, but deadlines are deadlines. Um, and Mr. Casey, if, um, is this time sensitive, this approval for you? August 10th is my kill switch. So if I don't leave with, uh, hopefully, what you all are willing to grant here this evening, it just goes back into the washing machine. I don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Okay. I started this in April. Yep, I understand. And I appreciate the question. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, what's your, what's your pleasure? I mean, he, I, I think he's gone above and beyond. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like he stated, he's, he's reduced the footprint, which reduces the requirement, the required size for his, any rainwater retention or whatever it might be. So mm -hmm. I, 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 think, I think he's met and exceeded the, uh, the expectations and the requirements, and by reducing it, he's even uh, lessened the requirements. So mm -hmm. al although he's maintained the, the original footprint of, of the retention system. So I think based on that, I mean, and, you know, it's the government's, slow at times so I don't want to I don't want to ruin his deal based on their 
Yeah. Right. Inability they're, they're, to meet their deadlines. They're on coming. And not to if I miss the deadline. Inland Wetland um, <laughs> had no comment whatsoever yeah. on stormwater. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's they, they commented a couple of things which we agreed to which were unrelated to stormwater. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and, I, and I think if, if, if the DEP comes back with some requirements, you'll be mandated to meet those even if we do give you some type of an approval here. I, I can tell you that they can comment on the application. I doubt they can comment on anything I would have to agree to that I haven't already done. Yeah. I, really, I yeah. really doubt that. I mean, but if they did come back and say you had, to, you had to another 30 feet of trenches, whatever, you'd have to do that even if we approved this, this evening. I just hesitate to say yes to DEP because no, no, I, they, they, don't, they don't have facts yeah, when yeah. they respond. I mean, I've been doing this for, since 1987, so I'm not picking on them. Yeah. But, but your argument would be with them. What they put in writing, hmm. when you question it and get into it, oftentimes is... Yeah. But your argument would be with them, not with us. Correct. And you can appeal it through their procedures yeah. and so on. Mr. Salevi. Yes, ma'am. I think there is also an opportunity where if I receive any comments, I can send it to the town engineer, mm -hmm. and when he applies for a drainage permit, if there's something that's absolutely, oh. uh, that has to be taken care of, the okay. town engineer can deal with deep and take care of it. And I will agree to um, uh, conform to anything the town engineer requires for this plan to go forward without hesitation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think a motion's in order. So I would make a motion to approve uh, the approval to include all final uh, requests by the town engineer. Is there a second? Mr. Francis, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. I can't thank you enough. I thank, thank you for you your patience. Much. We knew it must have been important if you waited this long. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Now you can go home and tell her it was worth so, it. <laughs> so, yeah. It may have worked out, you know? Hard to tell. Mr. Chairman, motion to adjourn. Yeah, 214 Benton Street first. Who's oh, good. okay. Benton Street. One more. One for the road. 214 Benton. Mr. Tona. I just mentioned uh, when you were walking away that Waterfront Harbor Management Commission in their letter requested yep. some more time to review that. I am hardly in a position to disagree with that request. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to table 214 Benton. So moved. Second. Mr. Vigliotti, uh, Mr. Mr. Hendrick, second Vigliotti. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Any zoning enforcement, accessory apartment, sediment erosion, planning, other or goal settings, anything else, everybody? Anything else will be held over to the next meeting. I agree. So our next meeting is scheduled for eight, August 11th. Uh, we may need to use that to handle the little pub. We'll be in touch. If you're going to be on vacation that day, please shoot me a note or Mr. Habansky when he gets back. If not, we'll come back on the 25th. If you're on vacation then, also let us know. Motion to adjourn. Come on. Henrik, second Mr. Francis. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no, carries unanimously. We're adjourned. It's 1145. If you decide to do the 11th, can you let us know as quickly as yes, possible? Yes, I will. Yes.